Heard any breaking news lately? I have no idea what you're talking about. Nope, no idea. None. Yeah, so uh, Super League, it's a thing. The thing that we heard about and stolen emails that made their way to their Spiegel and footy leaks and everything else, it's come to fruition. Probably a little earlier than any of us thought it would. It's alive. It is alive, and Florentino it Perez has been alive. going nuclear today. I got a clip of Florentino Perez. You want to hear it? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. I'm a warrior. I'm a gonna win. Allegedly, yeah, that was from El Chiringuito on, on Spanish TV. Allegedly. Allegedly. I mean, look, it's... I, I like how we use the pandemic as the reason. Like, it, the pandemic exposed issues within our system. Like, no. No, it didn't. You've been wanting this for a long time. Me, that, yeah. Just don't... My thing is... Here's the biggest issue I have with it. Well, not the biggest issue. It's I was going to say, other issue. than everything else? Right. So, the, no, number one, let me go ahead and get it out of the way because I think some people have, because I'm generally like super capitalist in my viewpoints, like get your money. I'm completely against this. Completely. Non starter. Uh, to me, it, it provides me zero joy. And my team is in it. So, is I that think maybe, I little... is that maybe why? Um, no, I think I would be a, against it to begin with, but it provides me no joy. There's no romance to Milan's rebuild now. There's no romance to coming from nowhere. And now we're in the top two. We're looking to, you know, get back in the Champions League. It's all gone. It, 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 they, to me, I don't feel any joy with that now. It's like, okay, so it doesn't matter. We're going to Super League anyway, so... Can, can I ask one thing? I, I don't care that we're playing, you know, we'll play Barcelona, you know, f- five times next year or, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever however they break the schedule yeah. down. I, I, whether it's two, five, two. ten, I don't care. It's not fun for me. Let me let me ask you this, though, because this is something that I've wondered about, because that has come up. I, I've heard other people say the same kind of thing. Like it came up about the Liverpool game today. Like, you know, oh, well. Right. Now it doesn't matter because they're not going to get into four, or if they get into fourth, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. Would it still matter if they won Serie A, though? Because, I mean, the idea, at least on paper, now we can get into what we think might actually be the real motivations behind the scenes, which I've got black helicopter theories, and I rarely have black helicopter theories. But if they participate in the domestic league, and yes, they're not playing to finish, you don't want them to. No. Why? Because because the, the, they cheapen the competition. It's like, it's like when how the do SEC they cheapen the, school... the domestic competition though? Because isn't the domestic competition about winning the title rather than right. finishing in the top four to qualify for for another competition? Uh, if if depends on what your end your end goal is. I mean, have the Cincinnati Bengals really tried to compete to win a Super Bowl in the past? I think they would tell for, you they forever have. Forever o'clock. 40 years? I think they'd tell you they it's have. It's Boomer Esiason. Have they really put forth a legitimate mm. assault on the title? Mm. Uh, I mean, there are the, the Cleveland Browns. When's the last time they made the playoffs? Have they made a, an well, assault? Last to year, win? technically, but yeah. Last year's the closest they came, right? Let me, let, me, let me go to my black helicopter theory real fast so I can get this out of the way. Because okay. there it is. What... I think is being done is a high stakes game of chicken. Right. I think because this on paper, how it's being presented is a replacement for the champions league. And on Florent- paper, yes. Florentino Perez talked about that consistently. He said, they're not going to make enough money to the champions league. He doesn't like the new, pr- the new actually not proposed anymore. It's real mm-hmm. format. He doesn't like the Champions League. They're not going to make enough money to make it worth it. They're overcoming a lot of losses, which that part's true. I mean, you can get into some of the whys, but COVID did wreck a lot of people's finances, including these big teams. That's real. But Florentino Perez and all the others have said this is about more games against top teams, and it is a replacement for Champions League. It is not a replacement for participating in the domestic competitions. But you want to play 18 games. It is two groups of 10. You play everybody in your group. 
home and away, that's nine teams, that's 18 games, on top of your domestic competition. Mm -hmm. 56 games for the leagues that have 20 teams. Mm -hmm. That's not actually feasible, in my opinion. Agreed. I I think the end game for the Super League teams, which is what they want, even if they might not be saying that right now, is to not have to worry about the domestic competitions. Agreed. I think that's the end game. Right now, mm-hmm. that's not what's on. That's not what's going on, and and right. that's not what happened in Serie A today. Because the three teams that are doing Super League, I think people have portrayed it as they're leaving the domestic leagues. They're not yet. I think they're hoping to get kicked out. Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, I think I, I think a lot of people in Europe are skipping the fact that what you and I agree is step one, right? Which is the breakaway Champions League. Yeah. I think they're already looking to that end state, which is why you're seeing the apocalyptic visions being portrayed on Sky, and which is hilarious to me, and and a lot of these other outlets. That's why you're seeing like Apocalypse Now, Huey helicopters flying across, uh, you know, the jungle top because in their mind they're skipping the fact that they, they know what the end game is. So we're already going to the end game. Yeah, and. And I, I agree with you. I think you're I don't think there's black helicopters. I think that this is a, a continuation of the Americanization of world soccer. And we saw this before in a couple different ways. One, the, in, the name has been kicked around the International Champions Cup, World Football Challenge. Yeah. The, I, 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 the idea has been for a long time to play meaningful games. And this is my black helicopter theory. The meaningful games in front of one of the largest, highest spending audiences, which is the American audience. And they tried doing, remember a while back, they tried getting La Liga games, mid-season La Liga games in Miami with relevant sports. They, they tried making that happen. And La Liga pushed back and said, nope, you're not doing it. It's not happening. They knew they would never get a Champions League over here. I think that the idea, you're telling me Stan Kroenke's not going to try to get an Arsenal Super League game in his, in his new palace in Los Angeles. No, no, but here's the funny thing about the way this is all spinning today is people were loving the idea of a La Liga game being played in the U.S. because people who were doing that hate the idea of MLS and they think it would hurt MLS and it's a better competition because it's La Liga, et cetera, et cetera. Now they're going to have to... to bend themselves backwards like the Matrix because they're Mm going to have to be against it because this is how it goes. This is where this is all getting really confusing to see whose side is he on. But if I can can get back to this whole thing, yeah, which is a great call out, the the Bobby Bobby Heenan, who's he here for? One of the greatest spoilers in the history of all wrestling. (laughs) Whose side is he on? Which side is he on? God bless you, Bobby Heenan, wherever you are. Yeah, oops. Um, That's why you don't need to know what's about to happen. Just just let it That's right. The, getting back to my whole thing. Yes. Yeah, as, as a person who has a team in this, with apologies to Spurs, because you guys are essentially just entering a tournament that you can lose yet again. So, I mean, this is no big deal for you guys. The end result will be the same. Arsenal, I mean... Spurs, Arsenal, AC Milan. Why in God's name were they included? They're brands, period. Brands. Mm -hmm. AC Milan is a brand name. At this point, all we are is a brand name. I I, I love AC Milan. No, we are. That's a little harsh. No, it's not. You're second. You'd be in the Champions League next year. You're you're, you're good this season. We're not going to be in Champions League next year. Well. We're not. You would have been. We would have been, theoretically. Well, I mean, you might be, actually, because who knows at this point. Yeah, I mean, Milan's sitting at 66, Juve's in four at 62. That's not a guarantee that we were going to be in Champions No, no, of course. Of course. But the, the, this team has been ripped down to the studs. The last time we won Serie A was, what, 2010, 2011? And, and, it's, and you're telling me, what have we been since then? We've been nothing. If you're still an AC Milan fan at this point, you're legit, you're real. Because you've been through some tough times. <laughs> like from Calciopoli to the stagnation to the rebuild now. To me, the rebuild now is meaningless. It means nothing. Because, and this is what 
a lot of people I'm seeing on Syria Twitter, largely from the American fans, it's going to be like the 90s again. It's going to be like the 90s. It's not going to be like the 90s where you had Silvio Berlusconi and Morotti and the Agnellis just throwing wads of money into the, the giant fire machine. You're not going to have that because Gianni Agnelli is not in charge of Juve anymore. Exor is. Who is Exor? Exor, this is not black helicopters. By all means, go and do the digging. Exor is a multinational conglomerate based out of the Netherlands that is run by John Elkon. Elkon is a grandson of Gianni Agnelli. And they are, and, and Elkon also runs, uh, I, I believe it's PSI or PSA. It's the group that used to be Daimler Chrysler, that used to be Fiat, that is now, uh, it's a hybrid company that he is the chairman of. Juve is a subsidiary of Exor. They're not going to throw wads of cash. They have risk management professionals involved in this. They're on the stock market. They're traded. They cannot throw dumb money away. It is going to be metrics <laughs> and margin. That's the key to that's the two magical corporate M's. Anybody out there who's listening in the in in on the Twitch pitch who is in corporate America, especially mid-level management and above, you've heard. Metric and margin, I promise you, it's what's going to happen now. You have one person who believes in spending dumb money in this whole thing, and that's Florentino Perez. Everyone else is going to be managing every dime. If you City, think City likes one, to spend dumb money. I mean, look, kind, of, kind of dumb money, at least. Kind of dumb money. But you're not going to get, I think, the 90s boom that you thought you were going to get. Uh, I, I just don't see it and because it's you will have agents who try to steer their players there mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And, and they would be dumb not to. Yeah. But if you're expecting 90s Juve, 90s Milan, 90s Inter, where uh, Ronaldo Fenomeno is, is splitting every Serie A defense in eight different ways on a nuclear sprint to the goal, it's not happening. Uh, if you're trying to get back to the days where you had Costa Curta, Baresi, Maldini, uh, Ricky Kaká, Inzaghi, Pirlo, Seedorf, it, 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 no, it's not happening. Those days are gone. The only way that they, they can make this whole thing better is by keeping more of the pie for themselves. They don't, they don't want to share with Young Boys or Fenerbahce. They don't want to share with uh, it, Marseille. They don't want to share with Napoli. I'm sorry that that to me I don't. If you're a part of that, I don't want you in Syria. I don't. I, I love Milan, still do, probably always will. I don't want him in Syria because I don't want Milan, Napoli cheapened. I don't want Milan, Bologna, Udinese cheapened, because if they have a game in Super League, mm-hmm. and it's coming up, and that window is pretty tight. Milan has to make choices. They feel like a U23 lineup for Spezia. It, it, kills the comp- it kills the competitive balance of the game. That's been the assumption that everybody's had, is that this would the teams would immediately not care about the domestic league. I'm not 100% bought into that like across the board. I, I don't think that would be the case like day one. I don't think that would be the case early in the season. I think it's later in the year where you have to make those choices. And, and just like you do in Champions League. I mean, that already right. happens. Um, I don't know if that changes. You know, Maybe because you're playing 18 games, and I don't know what the schedule would look like. I think they're trying to start in, in an August time frame. Mm-hmm. So you're going to play 18 games across – you know, late August, September, October, November, December. Right. I mean, are you going to get all those games in before the end of the year? Are you going to include January in that and then go into your knockouts and stuff? I don't know how they're going to divide it up. I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear what that would be, um, but I don't know. Uh, but here's the thing. When know. we talk about caring about winning the league, there's two different entities involved here. The players, manager, probably sporting director, they care about winning the league, Sure. You step on the field, you wear a jersey, you have any bit of pride in your heart, you want to win. 
Like, I don't think anybody goes out there and is like, ho oh, hum, I'm just going to throw this game. You know, I, it's not, I'm not thinking that people are going to turn into the, the Chicago Black Sox. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, yeah. I didn't mean to imply that if that's what you were no, saying. No, no, no. But if, if well, here's, here's my point uh, the Elliott group does not give one red damn about winning Serie A if they're getting $3.5 billion to be a part of Super League because their whole purpose is rebuilding this rebuilding Milan into an asset that can be sold for profit. And they they do not want to be long-term owners of this team. They want to sell it. And they acquired the team when Yong Hong Lee's monopoly money vanished mm-hmm. and he failed to make his even his interest payments, which is uh, fine. I get it. But for everyone out there who has yet to have that realization that your club is an asset, that your club is uh, essentially you've all been cheering for a, a version of the Atlanta Braves at this point. You're a where, line on the balance sheet to a lot yeah, of folks. You're, you're a line on the balance sheet. You're a subsidiary of a larger organization. It's not your club. It's not. It's a billionaire's club, and you ain't in it, to paraphrase George Carlin. And you can buy the shirts, you can buy the scarves, you can know the chants, you can do all these fun things. But the veneer, as of Sunday night, in the most cowardly drop mm-hmm. that, that I think I have ever seen out of a, a professional's, any sort of professional organization— the most cowardly drop. And I think that's another problem I have with it. Yeah, that, that, knew, that's, that's my biggest problem is how they've done it. Right. They knew the veneer was going to be stripped away on this. Like, like Liverpool, right? Like Liverpool. Plucky upstarts, right? We always make the joke, the running ha-ha. The plucky upstarts of Liverpool. You know, oh, the cop end and you'll never walk alone. Look, it, the veneer's gone, man. You guys are in business with the rest of us. And if you are if you are Milan, if you are Spurs, if you're Arsenal, you have to be looking around like, did, did they just bring us in here to get our teeth kicked around for like the next three or four years until we kind of get halfway right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They needed somebody to come in and be the whipping boys, and we're it. So we're the tomato cans. You know, we we are we are the uh, the, the, the 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 guys who come in from parts unknown. Uh, the jobbers. The jobbers. Yeah, we're the jobbers, and that's a wrestling term for the, the guy from Parts Unknown uh, uh, versus uh, Hulk Hogan tonight. Uh, Steve uh, Steve Walensky from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then Steve Walensky gets throttled and smashed and blood drop. Yeah, yeah, you get you get squashed in thirty two seconds. Yeah, that's who we are. I, b- I believe the the English snob term would be minnows. That, that's what we used for our polls. Uh, Spurs yeah. won the poll for the biggest minnows in the the Super League. Right, yeah. uh, Atalanta deserves to be in this more than Milan does. Napoli deserves to be in this more than Milan does. Milan, and here's the fun part, and this is why I get so mad about Milan being in it. They have that nice little badge on their on their shirt that says seven for the Champions League titles they won. That means nothing now because you're devaluing it by leaving it. If you really valued this this Champions League history, uh, you would want to stay in the Champions League because, like, hey, baby, baby, this is our history. This is what we're a part of. We are a part of some of the most legendary stories of Champions League, win and lose. We're a part of it. And now you're leaving it for this technological terror you're managing to construct. Well, and- let me. this is where I, I want to get into something because I, I feel like – there's been a lot of yelling and stomping of feet over the last 24 hours. And I understand a lot of it. I said it today. Like I, mm-hmm. I did not grow up as a Milan fan. I did not grow up as a Manchester United fan. I didn't grow up as a fan of a club in Europe. Um, right. I came to that later. I do understand mm-hmm. the way it works. I get it. We're being attacked by bots now, which is bots. always fun. Um, I get it. I understand the romanticism. I understand the meritocracy. I understand all these things. Sure. But it's not like UEFA is actually the good guys in this conversation. No, and not. and they've screwed up the Champions League so many different times in so many different ways. Um, 
FIFA's not the good guys in this situation. Nope. FIFA wants to do a Club World Cup that's bigger. Why? They want to make more money. UEFA wants to do more games in the Champions League. Why? They want to make more money. All these things are are there already. So we can argue about the mechanism to make more money for the clubs. UEFA made a ton of money off the Champions League. The clubs wanted more money. Uh, yes, the Super League bots are attacking us. That, that is accurate. Because um, <laughs> they have bots, it seems like. But we can we can get into, okay, six games enough. Well, obviously not because now UEFA is going to go to 10. All right, is 10 games enough? Well, these teams felt like it was 18. Okay, what else is going on? UEFA didn't want to give up as much money to the clubs. The clubs wanted a larger share. Why? Because they're the ones producing the money. People aren't paying for the UEFA badge at the beginning of the show or on somebody's sleeve. They're paying for that Milan badge. They're paying for that mm-hmm. Spurs badge. They're paying... Yes, the Spurs badge. They are paying for it. The Manchester United badge. The other badges. They're paying for those. So the clubs want more money. I I get that. I understand that. Now, is Florentino Perez full of it in a lot of ways? Absolutely he is. Is he exaggerating? Absolutely he is. But is he completely wrong in saying UEFA's like not transparent and UEFA's not doing enough for the clubs? No, he's not. So what no. do you, what needs to be done differently? No, it's a bad. But here's the thing, guys. We, we're we're trying to diagnose a bad marriage. We have uh, we have uh, we have two partners in this. We have UEFA and we have the big clubs. In this particular scenario, FIFA, yes, they're out there. But in this particular fight that we're witnessing, you have the big clubs, the money clubs, and UEFA. And for a long time. UEFA was a negligent spouse. Yeah. They, they, they did not remotely invest as much as they took. Um, How long have Yelly and Florentino Perez been talking about doing a Super League of some sort? Oh, my God. At well, least I a decade? Been, yeah, at like least. 12, 12 years. At least. At, at least. least. So, I mean, this but, isn't new. But here's the thing. What happened in this is that after so long of, of essentially being – you know, treated like a part of the process and devalued and everything else, the big clubs decided they were going to go get a little side action. And just like many of these situations, it's all spilled out into the public into a big mess. And now we are all left to judge, well, who's the, you know, who's the more right of these two wrongs? <laughs> and and the, unfortunately, the kids in this situation, the players, are being told, well, you can't participate in the Euros. And, well, you know, the, the, we got people saying things. Like, let's are, let's be clear on that, that one. The, I'm, I'm but, really skeptical of that being pulled off. I, and if agreed. that's pulled off, UEFA is completely in the wrong and FIFA is in the wrong. Completely. But what happens is in these situations, people go nuclear without thinking right. And yet people who pop off at the mouth when a microphone's put in front of them, and they and they say something like, "Oh, maybe we'll, 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 we'll keep the players away." Well, did Did you really think that one through, there, boss? Yeah, you're using you the players as pawns, that and that's yeah. just that that's right. that's not right either because they didn't have any no, say it's in not this. Right. Putting and, 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 and look, it's it was hard today. Sorry, um, it was it was really hard today with like James Milner having to you know talk about this after a game. Um, Patrick Bamford right. being asked about it. Jurgen Klopp, when he arrives, is being asked about it. And Jurgen Klopp's like, I mean, he's got to defend his guys. I thought Jurgen Klopp handled it amazingly well. Um, he was frustrated because, I mean, he felt like he was being attacked and his players were being attacked by their own right. fans because of the situation. Right. And I don't think the fans were attacking them, but they were taking the brunt of it, which is not fair to those guys. It's just, it's mm-hmm. all, it's all difficult. It, it's all crappy that managers and players are being caught in the middle of this when they have no say over what the owners of these clubs and UEFA and FIFA are going to mm-hmm. do about these situations. Something it, needs it, to be done. Here's, here's, here's the thing that is getting me about this. And, and again, I, I, and I'll, at, after I say this, I'll give my response to what I think the answer is. But Milan has been. Man United, they're doing well this season, but it has been. Uh, you have Juve, has been. When it comes to Champions League, has been, right? And you have a couple of these other clubs that, you know, I think uh, Real Madrid, I think is probably the one that has the most, Real Madrid and Man City and Liverpool have the most to bring to the table from a credit perspective in this situation. But 
I, it, to me, it's cowardly as hell for Agnelli to talk about how it's all about, oh, the money, money. He's tired of, of trying to spend walls of money to get that Champions League trophy and getting knocked out by Athletic, by Atleti and by Porto and by whoever else comes in. Bro, that's your problem. That's a whole lot of your problem. And for all these teams that are crying, poverty, poverty, poverty. No, you're the ones who spent like drunken sailors thinking that no rainy days were going to come. That's you. Mm-hmm. That's you. That uh, Barcelona, you are the ones who mismanage your finances to a comical degree. AC Milan, you let a man come in with Monopoly money to run your club. He spent $250 million in transfers that panned out to... And you... You didn't think this would come back to bite you? It's your it's a you problem. You have Spurs who you know, you sank all your money into your new stadium and have a notoriously cheap owner when it comes to getting new transfers and whatnot in. That's a you problem as well. You have Manchester United, who that's been a, a, a dumpster fire for a while because you the whole Glazers debt, Ed Woodward and all that whatnot. I I hear a whole lot of you problems with this. That's a whole lot of you. And so now you're looking to essentially blow up a system that a lot of people really enjoyed to get your money right. Uh, The system was going to be blown up, though. They were already going to 10 games. That that was already happening. But but it's being blown up in a completely different way. It's being blown up more. You're right. It's it's not just, hey, look, we're going to, you know, like when you see the rebuilds, especially around town, of these old homes mm-hmm. where they just take off the top level of the house and then they, you know, rebuild at the top of the house. It, no, no, no. We are taking this sucker down below the dirt <laughs> and rebuilding it you, now. You know the the level of of rebuild it reminds me of when you took the Champions Cup, which was literally the champions of the leagues yeah. in Europe, yeah. and you said that's not enough. Nope. We we need more teams from these leagues. And and cup. and then you said, well, wait a minute. Well, now we need more teams from these leagues. Mm-hmm. And then it was, well, wait a minute. Now we don't even need the champions from some leagues. Let's make them go through like five rounds of qualification and travel right. all over the continent. And, and then maybe they can you know have the great honor of being in the group stage, possibly. But let's have the fourth team from England in. Yep. You know, that's kind of audacious as well. Like it's. Mm-hmm. What, what, where I'm frustrated with this is I think everybody's yelling about the idea of the Super League. The issue is the fact that you had these clubs who, yes, need to figure out ways to bring in more revenue right now because they lost a bunch recently. And, mm-hmm. yes, there are reasons why some of them are in a tighter crunch than others that they did on their own. But they also mm-hmm. didn't see a global pandemic coming. And, yeah, it's kicked them in the face. Okay, right. they're, they're trying to figure that out. I got that. UEFA is like, well, we need more games in Champions League. Why? Because UEFA wants to make more money. Okay. Mm-hmm. Both sides want more games between the big teams. There's no debating that. This right. idea that it's like, oh, the romanticism of the Champions League right now, and it's so wonderful, and it's great, and only six games, that's this perfect thing. No. They all wanted more no. games. Let's, let's romance, get that crap out of the way. My romantic Milan fan is the rebuild to getting into the top four. And that's gone. Okay, now that's a different that's, that's fine, a different that's thing with Super League. Being right. from me. That's a different thing with Super League. But even in the Champions League revamp, there was always conversation about having heritage places from some form or fashion of a certain yes. number of teams getting yes. in based off history, and it can be fairly recent history, yeah. but still history as opposed to what they did in the previous season. So that ship was not maybe not sailed but at least getting warmed up to get out in the water. So yeah. the the craziness that people are, are going off with about this is a little out it's just a little over overdone. No, it's what, not. I think it's overdone because it was already changing. The things no. that people are, are complaining about was already changing. It's changed a lot faster than it should have, a hundred percent. But but you're looking at it you're looking at it from the standpoint of still Champions League. It doesn't matter right. what it's called. I, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. But that's, but that's the window that you're looking at it. Right. Again, remember what we said at the beginning of the show. People in Europe, they, the seat holders in Europe are already looking at the end game, which is an NFL, NBA type system. No, 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 just, no. Let, let, me, let me finish my point because I, I didn't get to the, okay. the main All reason right, of right. it. Sorry, my, that's my fault. 
those things where people are arguing about, I, I, that's, that part's a waste of time. What mm-hmm. I have a problem with is the way this has been done. Because yeah. of what we, what we said earlier. Because I don't yeah. think that is the end game. I think the end game is to go further. I think these clubs, UEFA, again, is not the innocent victim here. No. But these clubs were doing one thing, and Yelly, Ed Woodward, others were involved in negotiating what this Champions League new revamp was going to be mm-hmm. along the way, putting all this together. So mm-hmm. that's horribly wrong. And if the end game is what I'm afraid it is, where it isn't about Champions League and how many more games and this and that, because all that stuff, that was already moving in that direction. Right. That's nothing new. It, right. This is way further, but that was already happening. Mm-hmm. It's the way this was done that is the situation and that potential of black helicopter theory in mm-hmm. that's not where it ends. It's we don't even want these teams to play in the domestic leagues anymore. Right. That is where it's way too far. Way too far. I, I and my and I don't want I, I, I my whole thing is let him go. And well, if for anyone out there well, who's who's been in a divorce or, or is about to go through one because God knows with everybody getting these shots, the whole world's about to go bonkers <laughs> more so than it already has. If you are facing that, take some advice from Zio Nick. Don't talk, just walk. Don't make a big fuss of it. Don't make a big thing of it. Don't talk, just walk. That's exactly what these teams need to do. Get it. Just do your thing. You, If you can pay $3.5 billion for these teams as an entry, like, yay, come on. Buddy, you can build your own ref program. That's not hard. Yeah. You can spend yeah. your money and you can get some of these refs. That's not a problem. Florentino says they're going to have the best refs. The best the refs. Best. The best the VAR. Best. The best of the VAR. Best. best. Satellite trajectory imaging. Yes. Surplus government satellites. Robot referees. Yes. Robots. They're going to be Perfect they're going to be Boston vision. Dynamics. Lasers. DARPA robot lasers. Yes. Let them go. Let them go. Well, right. did you see uh, Michael Cox's piece over at The Athletic? No. Really interesting take on basically what you just said. Because, look, that, let's let's go. If, if we're going to go full black helicopter and we're going to say, mm-hmm. look, this isn't the end game. The end game is to have its own league. Um, okay. Nate, Seven, yeah. sorry, we're upsetting you. My bad. Um, please who, who tell us. Upsetting? Nate, Seven, uh, we're being ignorant. Um, I don't claim to know football across the ocean, Nate. I've told you that a few times. I've said that. I'm an American fan who's grown up on the game here, and I've studied it, and I've learned it. Mm -hmm. I know that people are upset with this, and I understand it. What we're trying to get to here is not just trying to get the coolest viral clip of being angry. We're trying to get to how you actually fix this. Because everybody's already done the thing about let's give the right statement and let's say all kinds of big words and be angry and yell and scream. How does it get fixed? How does the game get better? The game gets – here's the thing. You were not going to stop the billionaires, and I know it sucks, and I, I, I get it. Yeah. I, there's a, a billionaire hedge fund that runs my team, Nate. Uh, there's a vulture hedge fund that takes pride in being a vulture hedge fund. They find depreciated assets, they buy them, and they flip them. That's currently who's in charge of my team right now. It sucks. It sucks as much as I have issues with Silvio Berlusconi in, oh my God, a multitude of ways. There was no question that that man loved AC Milan and he dumped a wall of cash into making them competitive. He was one of the first ones when they said financial fair play is coming around. It will kill Syria. He was one of the first, the canary in a coal mine. And another great job by UEFA. You're right. And so I, I have watched what's happened as the Americanization of European football has, has taken over. And a lot of these guys have interests or either in NBA or in MLB or in the NFL closed systems where even the worst team gets a substantial payout 
and they don't have to share it with anyone else. There's no second, there's no, you know, independent team in Des Moines who's going to get money from the Boston Red Sox. And it, that they prefer it that way. And well, the, and well, the well, NFL. The on the team, preferring, what what's one big reason why they prefer it? Because it's guaranteed revenue. And it eliminates risk. Yeah, yeah. It's guaranteed revenue, reducing risk. That's, it's there. You know, at the end of the day, whether you're the top of the tier or the bottom of the tier, how much money's coming in at the end. You know how much that check is going to be cut because you have the TV money. The contracts are already built. They're already booked in. You know what that's going to be. There's no challenges. There's no questions to this. And for the ticket holders in Europe, the people who I've talked to in Italy, it's for the people who are not Juve fans. They're like, dude, this this sucks. Like it it sucks because again, it takes the the competition out from the top four. Like if if you West Ham, right? And I think that's what Klopp, isn't it? Klopp a, a, was attributed a, yeah a quote to him saying, I, "I would prefer for all you know West Ham to be able to make it a Champions League." Me too. I I would prefer for a Sassuolo or I mean. Good God, has anybody seen the size of the stadium in Bergamo for Atalanta? It's not huge. Atalanta is not a huge team, but they built the right way and they compete in Champions League. And it's beautiful to watch. And that's not going to happen with this closed system. And to me, that it, it'll it, be different. You're going to have to, it'll be completely you're have different. Three years. You're going to have three years, I think, of like, wow, this is really cool novelty. And then after that, it's going to be like, oh, okay. That's what Perfect Tommy says that, that I, I totally agree with. Says as a fan, having a permanent Super League is like eating cake ice cream every day. Yeah. Right. That that I, mean, I, it, I agree with here. Yeah. It, it, it's Where's the fine line though? Like where where's the line? Like what's what's acceptable? Because as as plenty of others have said, uh Manu Porto fan six one one says, I know this is the way of the world and money rules all, but I hate change. Right. Ugh, this sucks if it goes through, shaking my head. Um, what's the, the way to go here? And, and, and Nate Seven's going further down the road. Like we were about black helicopters says, I don't want to watch United versus Barca in Sydney. I want to watch us versus Burnley in the Stratford end. Now I think there are people who would want to watch United and Barca. Is it necessarily going to be somewhere else? Now that's where we get into a whole nother set of conversations. And, and here's the thing. They talk about affordable ticket prices, like for the Super League, right? That's I'm not what about they've it. said. They've said that right. the, the primary funding is coming from their startups and TV. Uh, brother, let me tell you, that the idea of affordable ticket, that is a pretty broad flipping spectrum. It is. It absolutely <laughs> yeah, I mean, is. But yeah, how different is it from what it is right now? Uh, exactly. And, and, that's, and that's why I say you got to let him go because you're not going to stop the American billionaire – and and some of these other uh, other billionaires, I can't just lump the American billionaires in there, but it's the Americanization of the sport. You're not going to stop them without government, like binding government and, resolutions. And that's what You're some are calling for. Yeah. And and yeah, and so uh, I know that the, uh, uh, Boris Johnson has said something. Macron and, and has all said of them. something. The the prime ministers, all of them in the three countries have said right. something at the government level. All the Soccer federations have said something. All the leagues have said something. Right. UEFA said something. FIFA, eh, they they said something, but they weren't right. really all that strong with it. Um, I don't know how it gets stopped at this point, and that's You're, what right. that's my question: is what's signed? Yeah, you got to let them go. You have to let them go. Okay. You have to clean go the wound. If you I may, get to if the I may, let me finish. From the athletic. No, wait, let's go down that road real fast. You you let them go. So, okay. so let me. You clean the wound. Yeah. You get them out. Okay. You now what is them, what is left? Yeah, you work with what's left. Okay. And what you what you will find is we have found here, and and I and and Nate, you if uh, is Nate from England? Nate's a Manchester United fan. Manchester United fan. Okay. If if we work with what's left, Nate, and I know here in the United States we've had investors who've come in and bought up USL teams. And have taken, which is our second division, right? And they have started building up some of the second division teams. Or they buy into our top league here, MLS, and start building up some of these clubs. In in Syria, you have what has previously been a, a, a lower-end asset in Spezia. 
which American billionaires have come in and bought and started building up. You have another in Parma, which another t- is coming in and building up. Now they're talking about staying in Italy, building in Italy, not being a mm-hmm. part of any sort of grand plan. We have to find investors, whether it's club grouping, right? Like the fans, the supporters, like the old days. And you buy into a smaller tier team and you build it up. I, I, is it as attractive, though, if you don't you have do. – and this, this is where I go back and forth, and I don't know the way to solve it. Right. Is it as attractive to get those investors if you don't have the Milans, the Juventuses, the Enters? Are you going to buy into Spezia if you don't have that? I don't have I the think, answer. I, I think you can. I think you can, and that's the project. Look, yeah, I can't I, no, convince I like Nate not to be a Manchester United fan. He and no one can convince me not to be a Milan. No, fan. and I don't think people should either. We, uh-uh. Right? These are all choices that we make the, as fans, Nate, on our own. Because you and I are in the same boat, bro. Yeah, it goes back to what Klopp said. You know, like like he didn't have anything to do with it, and the players didn't have anything to do with it. You right. can be angry with the ownership for making yeah, exactly. the decision. And that's where I am. Yeah, I'm angry with the ownership. Yeah, and and you're in you a know? unique situation because your ownership is not there for the long haul. No, they're not. I know they're gone. The yeah. minute they feel that a, a team can come in and, and, and make a profit, they're, they're, they're going to be out the door. But there is the problem with this that I have is that as cold and corporate as, as UEFA was, they pretended that it was something grand and beautiful and magical. They at least pretended <laughs> – Super League's not even pretending what it is. Like when they put out statements where it's like we, you know, that we value, uh, we want to bring value to shareholders. If you go, there's a form, and I've talked about it before, and I know when I talk about this corporate stuff, eyes glaze over, but so much of it is coming to pass. If you, if you go for any publicly traded company here in the United States, there's a form called 10K. And it's a release that goes out to shareholders. It lists all the things that the company considers to be risk, no matter what it is, whether it's terrorism, cyber attacks, uh, pandemic, you know, weather, whatever. Almost every one of these, it is in order to maximize value for shareholders. That's it for these corporations, man. That's it. That's all they care about is maximizing value for stakeholders, investors, and shareholders. That's it. And for those of us who wear these jerseys, the shirts, the kits, and we wear them with pride, and we and we love getting into banter rants with, with people on social media, talking about how our club is great and awesome and wonderful and historical and whatnot, the veneer is gone, and now we must face the fact that we are dealing with entities that do not give one red cent about anything to do with us who are the shirt wearers and they only care about the profit engine that they are now in charge of. And it's up to us to decide if we want to be a part of that profit engine or not, because we are the fuel. Yeah. And I'm not trying to get Marxist or anything. We are the fuel. baby. It, it, It is our disposable income that goes out and buys. And if you're in the United States, Paramount plus to get champions league coverage, it is our, a disposable dollar that gets ESPN plus or any of the, or Fanatis or anything else. And if you, do, if you think it is that terrible, what's happening, then you got to put your money where your mouth is and say, uh, yes. I'm backing out. And yeah. I know that. It's Nate and Nate, full disclosure, Nate said he would, Nate, Nate said he would, he would not support yep. Manchester United going forward. If, if that happens and, and he would support a team in the pyramid. Nate, I, I completely, yeah. completely salute you 100%. because because it is one thing for – and let's go ahead and this is one thing that is not getting discussed enough. It is easy for fans in America to say I'm not watching Chelsea, Man U, Arsenal, right. Spurs, different, different whatever. It's easy for us. I, 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 I don't have Peacock. I, I don't – I'm not going to get Peacock. I'm sorry. I don't care. Uh even if it has WWE, I don't care. But I, it, it, I, that's a choice, Nate, that I'm going to have to make. Is I'm going to have to make, do I, and I want Milan out of Syria. If you're going to do this and you're going to collect $3.5 billion as an intro fee and 
Lazio's not getting that money. Rome's well, not you're going to collect a share of that. But you're going yeah, you're, yeah, you're not getting three and a half five. extra do, uh, double X. It's yeah, yeah. Not, you're not getting the full three and a half. You're going to make three hundred million. Yeah, you're getting about three right. I, I don't. But you are getting Which makes up your losses it, basically from COVID. Yeah, you're you're getting so much more money mm-hmm. than Parma's getting. Yeah, Benevento, absolutely. Fiorentina, absolutely. Torino, Spezia, Genoa, Udinese, mm-hmm. Bologna, Bologna, Sampdoria. Oh, it, it, it's comical now. Go, just go okay. and let the rest of us sort ourselves out. That's and and, and that means that I've got to get. Uh, uh, another jersey to pull for so I can have somebody to cheer for in Syria. That's what I'm going to do. You've already wanted to and switch to Roma anyway, Nick. Oh, I would. They follow me on Twitter. That's who I would go to. <laughs> yeah. I, I make no I make no bones about that. John, the 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 Michael Cox article that we were yeah. kind of starting with because basically like what Nick's saying is, is what Michael wrote about and saying that, mm-hmm. that was maybe not the prettiest solution and he doesn't like the idea of the Super League, but maybe the most effective. Yeah, so mm-hmm. here's what here's what Cox wrote, Nick. Mm-hmm. The the ideal solution would be reeling in the big clubs through salary caps, stricter limits on squad sizes, and greater redistribution of television income. Mm-hmm. If anything like that is on the t- on the table, then let's go. But realistically, it's not. Through football's globalization, power has become so concentrated in the hands of the big clubs that every reform from those involving broadcasting contracts to those regarding European qualification increases the hegemony of the elite. The mm-hmm. alternative is to set them free to let continental giants face continental giants every week in their own fantasy land and for domestic leagues to regain some level of unpredictability and excitement. Yes. That's what Michael it Cox said in the athletic might not be a bad afternoon. thing if that happens. In some weird way, the financial situation changes. Because, Great. yeah, it, it does take away... A lot of that cream at the top. You might not have all that meringue on top of the pie. But you still got the pie. Like, mm-hmm. that, it doesn't kill... It, for me, it doesn't kill the, like, the second and third and fourth divisions. Like, people are talking grassroots. I don't think it affects that hardly at all. And if this idea of the solidarity payments that they're talking about... And they're going to have to do something to try to win the PR side. The Super League. The Super League. TN, Drop numbers. They're going to have... Drop numbers. They've, they've said, like... Twice or I think up to four times as much as what UEFA has given in solidarity payments. I, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear a number and X. I don't want to hear. Yeah, a I don't. I don't know. And maybe they have. I haven't read all their stuff. I want specific numbers. I don't know. Right. Yeah, go ask Florentine. I know that's not. I'm not mad at you. Yeah, guys. I know. I'm just saying. I, I want. I don't think they even know yet. Be like, we are giving. We are going to redistribute X amount to the rest of the league. I don't think they even know yet, and and that's what I want to see what that does. So if that that's happens. Hilarious. Okay, then maybe the, the lower divisions actually benefit from this. Maybe. Leave that to the side. I don't think they're hurt by it. Not in a huge way, because I don't think what Manchester United and Chelsea and Manchester City and Liverpool do really affect Cambridge United. I don't think it really affects Oxford. I don't think it really affects Dagenham and Redbridge. Like I don't think they're living and dying based off what the Big Six is doing. Now, it affects... Obviously, the fans of, of the big six clubs that are going to leave because it changes their football life 100%, and that's going to be tough. Um, it affects that second tier right below. It affects, like in this case, West Ham, Leicester. It affects that level of club in a big way, maybe in a positive way. I don't know. And maybe this then, as as one thing out of the crazy rants that Florentino Perez did on Spanish television tonight, one thing that I thought actually did make a little bit of sense is this idea that, okay, if this happens, okay, and then you got to re-envision things a little bit. He didn't talk about it specifically with England. We'll come back there. But he talked about mm-hmm. a Balkans league. He talked about an Iberian Peninsula league. He talked about the, the Dutch-Belgium merger, which has already been talked about. Reimagining how things have been done, because football's done that multiple times. And the Premier League was that. Champions League was that. I mean, there's so many different things that that's happened with over the years. In England, does this open that door, and we've talked about it, to bringing Celtic and Rangers in? Is that what you're going to do to try to make up for that? It wouldn't shock me if that conversation happened. But would it make it a more compelling competition if Big Six leaves in England, three in Italy, three in Spain leave, and you have what's left? You have Sevilla, Villarreal, Athletic Bilbao, battling it out. Real Sociedad, battling it out in Spain. 
You've got what? Atalanta, Napoli, Roma, Lazio battling it out in Italy. You've got in England. Now, England's the one that takes the biggest hit because you're losing six. But you're, you're talking then Leicester and, and Villa and West Ham battling mm-hmm. it out. Well, is, I, is that I better? Used to play, I, I used to play soccer with my, uh, with my dad's team. It was a group of over 60 guys. And, I mean, number one, if these guys were all incredible. A lot of them were former, um, uh, you know, it's somewhere in the English pyramid uh, professionals. And one of them told me a story one night because whenever we get done, we'd play for like two and a half hours and we would go to a bar and, and throw back a couple of beers. And one of them told me a story about the the old time stadiums in England and how it used to be. And he said, you know, what would happen is you'd be, you know, the the state of the stadiums was that they had no like <laughs> functional bathrooms or you couldn't get to the bathrooms. I'm trying to remember what it was. And he said the little kids would just stick their arms up in the air. Dad lifts the kid up. The kid gets passed down to the front and there's a line of kids up at the front near pitch side peeing. And then when they're done, they lift their arms up. The person who's watching the game reaches down, grabs the kid and body surfs the kid back to the parent. It doesn't sound to me like even back then, like 50 some odd years ago, and the, uh, the guy's like, man, God, he has to be in the 70s now. So, yeah, so 50, you know, 60 years ago, it didn't sound like England had a problem filling the stadiums up. Didn't sound like there was a problem with that. In Italy, they didn't have a problem with it. You know, it, it will take adjustment to get used to the idea that the FIFA World Player of the Year candidate for this year is not coming to town on Saturday. That's that is going to be, you know, or maybe he when is they play and, for a club in the league, yeah, right. Maybe or it was, is used to be in the league in the country, but it, it will take some adjustment that you know five players from Brazil are not going to be featured on you know your your side, and it may be a bunch of local kids with a few sprinkled of internationals here and there, if it does and there, the, the, the fans, the supporters have more of a say in the operations. Is that bad? That part's got to happen. That's the part. And, 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 and Nate hit on it a little bit in the chat too of, yeah, I thought Jurgen Klopp kind of got to it a little bit today as well. Um, because he was kind of saddened by feeling like they were being attacked by the the fans a little bit for something that they didn't choose to do. And I, right. I think obviously Klopp and his previous statements and Milner and his today, like they're not for this idea. They don't, they didn't support this idea. So you've got to involve the fans. And it's something that the biggest clubs have failed to do well for a long time. And it's hard. Look, I mean, you know, we, see it here in Atlanta, you know, and no, Atlanta United doesn't have that kind of history. Atlanta United has a large fan base. Atlanta United has a, you know, they, they do the best they can to engage on a regular basis with the fans. Right. But you're also talking about a multi-million dollar business that can be very difficult to engage and make every person feel like they did in Atlanta, like back in the Silverbacks days when you would see the owner walking through the concourse and, you know, he might hand you a beer from the concession stand because he might be in front of you in the line. You know, it's not like the days back in the non-league or back when the club like Manchester United or these other clubs were small and, and it felt more personal. I don't know if you can get back to that with if this happens or not, but the way this was done has damaged these clubs that are involved in a way that I don't know how it goes for the longtime fans. I don't know how they recover them. Yeah. Because, right. you, I mean, look at how it happened today with Liverpool. Basically, because the owners haven't had any statements. You know, the only people who've been out publicly talking about this today was Florentino Perez and Jurgen Klopp. And that's not right. Jurgen Klopp's job. No. And, and he's put out there to do it because the owners don't. Manchester United hasn't even tweeted about it. They no. haven't even issued a statement. Mm-mm. No, because they, they know what's going to happen. But everybody, like, it's horrible. And that's, they've got to. And, and this was an issue before this. And that's, I think this hasn't changed it, but it has exacerbated it. Mm-hmm. Clubs have to understand the idea, and it is a romantic idea, but it's a real idea, 
that the lifeblood of the game comes from the fans. You have to respect that they're giving you that. They're giving you their money, too. And yes, I know that's what's going to make the world go round. I've said it a million times. Money's going to drive all of us. It is. Yep. Like it or not, it is. But the clubs have to be stewards of people's feelings mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. best as they can. And that's not going to be perfect, and people will not like things that clubs do. That's never going to go away. That's always been the case. But right now, it feels like people are being used because clubs aren't coming out and explaining themselves to their fan base. Right. Explain it. If if Milan, and Milan's an interesting situation because of their ownership. Manchester United, look, people have hated the Glazers from day one. There's been parts of that that's been overblown. There's been parts of it that haven't. But they owe it to the people that buy tickets on a regular basis to explain why you're doing this. It is that big of a deal. And to not do that is incredibly disrespectful. And that's a problem. And look, it's not new. It's not new. But this has blown it up to a point that it's a must because you can't replace all of these fans with the new fans that you're expecting to create worldwide or in that 16 to 24 age group. You can't just replace people. You need to be more understanding of people's emotions because they're giving you their their heart and their blood and their soul in this. You got to respect that. And these clubs who have done it the way they have have 100% not respected it. John, we've been going for a minute. I've, I've, I started uh, the unleashing process has happened, but yeah, which is what, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, when, when you're wound up, the best thing to do is just let you go. <laughs> this is what we've learned over, over the time, but, and Jared's in the queue too. So is that what we call it? Yes. Yeah. Sort of. It's, it, you know, it's hard. I mean, there, there's not a right answer here. There's not a way to fix this. that's easy because there are things that need to be fixed. You know, right. I mean, Bayern Munich winning the the Bundesliga over and over again isn't good for the German game as a whole. What can no. you do about that? You know, the French League's finally competitive this year. That's great, but it hasn't been great that PSG's won it over and over again. Scotland, huh. Jarrett, I mean, you know, it's, oh, they didn't get the 10 in a row. I mean, like... You, it's Juve, you know. same thing with Juve. Yeah, and they didn't get the 10 in a row because Still, they, they shot themselves in the foot over and over again. Yeah. Like... Those things aren't good, and that's what Michael Cox was getting at. Like, there are things that need to be fixed. This doesn't fix all of those. It doesn't even fix many of them, in my opinion. The one thing that might, in some weird, crazy way, is if these clubs who think they're bigger than this go, and if the market proves that they have the right idea, they'll be fine. Yep. I don't think that Here's, will necessarily it, pull away from the others. No, if I'm if People, I'm Super League... And I want to make it right. And, and then after this, I'll shut up and whoever wants to go can go. Jared. If I'm Super League, I say this. In the event that you guys want us out of your leagues, fine. Here's what our promise is to you. We will not counter-program you. Mm-hmm. We're not going to. That's not our intent. We will do like Monday nights, Monday nights and Tuesdays. And then you can still do your Champions League on Wednesday and Thursday. And then if you want to do something on, you know, if you want to have your normal league games on Saturday and Sunday, that's fine. We will not counter-program you. We will still provide solidarity payments to the leagues to make up for the absence of your historically great clubs for X period of time to allow you to ramp up these, whatever you deem your replacement clubs to be. Uh, and, and furthermore, we will we will take a a stewardship role in global football programs for youth programs globally. We will we you know we will have camps running to underserved communities all around the world. This is our 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 olive branch. This is our whatever, however you want to put it. But I'm telling you, if you that you have to because again, it all comes down to money. You have to if you want to have any goodwill. That's what you need to do. And I'm going to use wrestling again. And again, there's half the audience eyes glaze over. There was a period of time when Vincent K. McMahon wanted to own every wrestling promotion out there. He said, I want to bring it all under one roof. That is my dream. He did it. 
He accomplished it. And outside of a few indies that were out there, like in the local National Guard Armory 412, whatever, where they were using like chicken wire and, you know, rubber chickens in a match, you know, but it didn't, it, it, it just, it absolutely stagnated everything. And so now WWE is, is not counter programming its closest competitor, AEW. They're not. They've staggered their nights out. So if you're a wrestling fan, you can watch wrestling almost every damn night of the week if you want. It would be wise for Super League, right. if we do have black helicopters and we say they're moving to a fully closed system, to say that now. We will not counter-program local leagues. We will claim Monday and Tuesday nights. You guys can do whatever the heck you want. Build around it. But this is what we're doing. And we're going to provide solidarity payments for 20 years. I think that would be a good start, but let them go. Just don't try to fight it. Don't put any stupid things up. Right. Let them go because the morons are going to do what they're going to do. And if you don't let them go, I promise this will happen. They will make their own stupid club and they will put on their own show and they will buy up all your best players and it will be scorched earth because that's what the American billionaire does. And you don't want it. Let it go and let them have their own, uh, I think, their own fantasy land. Beautiful analogy. Let them have Fantasy Island. I don't want it. it it's not my product. I, and, and if you love it and you think it's great, you're probably an American fan sitting at home on a couch and not a ticket holder for one of these teams. But that's the thing, Nick. If they don't counter-program it, you can watch it as a neutral fan if you want or if it's your team, whatever. Sure. That's fine, too. That's maybe one of the underlying things that isn't being talked about much here. It doesn't have to be a competitor. Right. It can be a fantasy land. It can be that Monday night thing. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be that Friday night thing. Leave the, leave the weekend. Lee, if, if you don't want to fight with UEFA and, and Perez said that they they want to talk to UEFA, they want to negotiate with UEFA. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Okay, then you leave Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday alone. You do Mondays and Fridays, and you do your own thing for a 38-game schedule. You put 20 teams in. You figure out how that's going to work. If you're really mm-hmm. going to keep five spots open, you're going to have to have some kind of agreement with clubs to be able to go back and forth and all that. Okay, do it as an additional thing. Because I don't think soccer fans, because you mentioned the wrestling thing. I think it's a perfect analogy here. Like If you're a wrestling fan and you can watch Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, yeah, mm-hmm. and in your weekend stuff. If you're a fan of the the sport, the the sports entertainment in this case, you're gonna watch games even if it's not your team because it, it's right. it's exciting to you. So if you do it to where it's a compliment, crazy way it can grow everything, but it's got to be done the mm-hmm. right way and again with respect. And so far we haven't seen that, right. and no, we, we don't trust the end game. Now, Jarrett, you come at this from a very different perspective because you are a Celtic fan, and Celtic has not been invited to the Super League yet. The Super League. As John says. Um, They might be because I don't know who these other three founding members are going to be, but they have not been invited yet. What is your take on what this does to the game as a whole? Um... I mean, for me, it's. I mean, I spoke on this morning. I want to. I kind of want to. I, I know it's. I know it's like almost. I don't mean it to sound like the coward's way out, but I kind of want to do a wait and see on this. I kind of want to see how this breaks out. Um, don't expect South Carolina Rangers to get that call. Um, I think I mentioned. I'm surprised we haven't heard the Turkish leagues mentioned with, with any of these three spots left. Um, Russian league makes a lot of sense, but. If everyone else, I mean, there's a lot of knock-on effect here. Like, how do you deal with uh, Champions League going forward? How do you deal with TV rights going forward? You know, how do you deal with clubs that are on the outside of this? Clubs that are smaller that occasionally jumped up and bit somebody, but now the shark to bite is no longer a great white. It might be a black tip reef shark at this point that you're reaching up and biting. Um. You know, how does that impact the gate? You know, how does it impact a team like Rangers, who uh, Rangers really going to benefit 
this year getting a group stage Champions League coming up. Well, that Champions League money, I know it gets really big later on for the bigger clubs, but that group stage money and the gate revenue, it's a big deal to some of these smaller clubs. I mean, that it's not going to make or break them, but it gives them a little bit of leeway to improve the teams and build on. Uh, so I do want to see how they get impacted by it because yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be a different world for them. Um, I stand by my black helicopter theory that if you do let them go and they don't counter program, first of all, let's go ahead and make a lot of friends tonight um, because we're already in the I'm already kind of in the mood for that. Uh, that's free market, baby. People only don't people only want to talk about the free market when it's something exactly the way they want it to, but. You, get, you start letting the free market work and it doesn't work the way they want it to, they're going to get up in arms about it. But let the market work in this case if they don't want to kind of program them and if they want to kind of do their own thing. I think you start looking at, you know, how you potentially realign Europe. I mean, do you do you place a call to Wales and to Scotland if you're England and say, hey, the big six aren't here anymore. Uh, you know, we want to form a we want to form a super group here. And we want to form like a Britannia League with Northern Ireland as well. I'm sure, that's going to go over well after Brexit. But um, you know, do you do you see maybe Spain and Portugal decide, hey, maybe we should get together and form something? And then, as we reform ourselves, do we start looking at TV deals in a different way? Because of the simple fact that, yeah, guess what? That that Premier League money that is absolutely insane. It's not going to be the same without the big six. Nope. You can sell me on, you know, Brendan Rodgers being a progressive Northern Irish coach. You can try and sell me on James and Everton all day long. It ain't the same without the big six. And I promise you the money won't be the same. So I think the, the knock-on effect with the leagues and with how teams conduct themselves will be very interesting. Now, the smaller teams, like, and by smaller, I mean, like, um, you know, let's say the Slavia Prague, the Celtic, the Rangers, those teams – they're already operating at, you know, Rangers finagling of the books aside a decade ago. With that aside, most of them aren't going to – they're not going to be crippled by this. They're not going to die because of this. They'll be disappointed by it. They might have to adjust a couple of things. They won't die because of this. Yeah. But how it affects them and, you know, what who might reach out to them, that is a very interesting concept to me. And I, it, I'm kind of going black helicopter with it, but I don't – but in the back of my mind, in my heart of hearts – I don't think it's as black helicopter as I'm thinking it might be. Maybe a little. <laughs> Maybe a little. Just a, just a couple. Oh, certainly swirls. a little bit, but not not completely not completely off the wall. If everything happened that way, um, of course, as you know, for all we know, uh, bluffs might get called. They might say, "Hey, yeah, you can stay in the league. We're just going to grump about it." I don't know how it's going to break down. Yeah. I, I I don't. If I if I knew, I would be buying futures with a bunch of these a bunch of these clubs that are publicly traded. Which well, is, they, at least they initially went up. I don't know if they finished up. Yeah, I mean, early numbers were Juve was up twelve percent today, and Manchester United's uh, holding company was up nine and a half percent. Yeah, I, look, I. There's things that need to change. They probably should have changed by now. There's things that should have been done better a long time ago. Um, Burned and I were going back and forth uh, about this, uh, I think, on the Discord earlier. Financial fair play made all this worse. That was the time where you should have actually been talking about like a salary cap kind of idea to try to keep the haves from not going so much further away from the have-nots because that's not good for the game either. And like the old school fans who you know talk about the the meritocracy and all these things, it's not good that there's teams that are spending two and three times what other teams in the league are doing. That, that doesn't make a compelling competition. I mean, there's there's again elements of Florentino Perez's crazy rambling nonsense that made some sense. Some of it. Um, there's some questions that I have about it. There's one where he kept saying like, "We're here to save football. Football is gonna die. We're here to save it." No, like Jarrett said about if things happen, what's next for some of these other clubs? It's not going to die. Is it going to be different? Are you going to have less money to work with? Yeah. You're going to have to cut costs? Yeah. You're going to be operating possibly on a, a slightly smaller scale? Yeah. A lot of them could stand to do that. A lot of them should, should have done that a long time ago. But also in the world we're in today, 
can you find a way to watch and stay connected to your your League One team if things dramatically change for them? Yeah, people are doing that right mm-hmm. now. I mean, in this country, people yep. are watching League One and League Two teams all the time. People are watching mm-hmm. Serie B. They're, they're, they're finding a way to follow their team. Um, you can bridge that gap a lot easier now. You can continue to tell that story a whole lot easier now. It, it's we, we have to get out of this, like, it's all going to go away tomorrow idea because it's not. Right. No matter what happens, it's not. None of this is going to like immediately disappear. People said the same kind of things when the Premier League broke away from the Football League. They said the same kind of things when the Champions League emerged out of the Champions Cup. Mm-hmm. I'm sure maybe in South America they say it about Argentina and Brazil having six spots in the Copa Libertadores. Why do they have them? That's where the money is. That's People yeah. want to see those teams play. You got an mm-hmm. Argentine or a Brazilian well, we, team we, in almost every group. I, I, I'm trying to remember the the sports writer who who said it. Whenever uh, baseball had their strike in '94, and then the you know the guaranteed salaries and all that, and people were lamenting that it was the end of baseball and baseball would be dead. And the writer said, "Look, at some point, a bunch of kids are going to get together in a field and start playing ball. At some point, they're going to get really good, and at some point, some people will come." and get tired of standing around and watching them and they're going to build some bleachers. And then some smart person is going to come up and learn to put a fence up and start charging people admission. And the cycle will start all over again. It's not going to, there will, as long as people love to play there, the game will exist. It will not exist maybe in the way we want it to from a historical standpoint, from a sentimental standpoint, it's the game will be there. And, and Florentino Perez can talk about doing really dumb things like shortening the game to 45 oh. minutes because to engage younger audiences and, and, and whatever. Look, man, Florentino, I got bad news for you, pal. My, my son is 11 and he loves playing, loves playing. Don't tell Florentino that he's going to, he's going to lose it, but he doesn't want to sit down and watch your team play. He wants to watch highlights, and he's out the door. He doesn't care because he just loves playing. He loves being with his friends and scoring goals and, you know, juking people. That's what he enjoys. And and then he, he'll play FIFA. He'll open pack after pack uh, on FIFA, but he doesn't give one red some live action games unless Atlanta United happens to be playing. Outside of that, that's, he doesn't care. But that's something Florentino is talking about is that yeah. they're trying to appeal. And, and look, they're not doing this for you and me. Mm. This isn't about those yeah. of us who have, <laughs> have lived in, and been in this game for a long time. It's not about that. I yeah. think that's, that's yeah. wrong because should be a voice at the table at least because you don't have to cast one aside. But yeah, right. they're trying to figure out what's going to be compelling to that 16 to 24-year-old. And he kept citing, Mm -hmm. like, they're not as interested in the game. They're not as interested in sitting down and watching games, like you're saying, Nick. Like, Mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people said. That's not new. That that had come up before. I know we've talked about it on the show before. They're not talking. They're not doing this for us. And they should factor us into it, at least. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, that's the thing, is you can do both if you do it the right way. You could have done a better version of the Champions League with a couple more games. Absolutely. You could have done, instead of the Swiss system, right? you could have done six groups of six. You play everybody home and away. You play five games at home, five games away. It's very simple to follow. You do groups of six. You get yep. your ten games in. Maybe you just go to five. Maybe you go to eight games. That's two mm-hmm. more than you're playing already. Right. There's things you can do to figure that out, but it ultimately... Because we can go round and round and round and round and round about all of it. It ultimately came down to UEFA didn't want to give the clubs more money. And the club said, well, adios. We're going to go do our own thing because we got people who will give us that money. Mm -hmm. And and that's 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 the analogy I use. They were a negligent spouse. Yeah. And they didn't provide (laughs) at all (laughs) for their partner. (laughs) And their partner said, well, I can, I can go and do battle all on my own. I don't, I don't need help on that. Now, so. we, we've kind of went back and forth about parity a little bit in, in the Twitch pitch. Um, when I mentioned salary caps, uh, Looney Tick said that salary caps are a way for owners to not spend as much. And it can be, absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I said, but it can also, you know, create a more compelling competition. And Looney Tick said, was there really parity before financial fair play? The big clubs were on a rocket ship as soon as TV deals went into the hundreds of millions of dollars, way before financial fair play. It's not just the TV deals, though, Looney Tick. Because in England, you know, I mean, yeah, I know there's differences for where you finish in the league, but your your team number 20 in the league, those teams are all kind of the same, right? Mm-hmm. The, the top teams are still kind of the same, right? It's not about the TV money in England that has created the big clubs being bigger. That's the ownerships. That's the Roman Abramoviches. That's the, the Manchester right. City ownership. That's the Liverpool and, and Manchester United ownerships. Like That's the ownerships that have created that separation. Financial fair play was a stupid band-aid that actually, in a lot of ways, created more separation. Because you couldn't be a new team with money and get into the club. You were still on the outside looking in. Because you couldn't do whatever well, you couldn't do what Chelsea had done. Yeah, yeah, I'll use Juve as an example in, in Serie A, where you had Moratti and Berlusconi who were billionaires throwing money around like it was stupid. And meanwhile, Juve appeared to be left in the dust during this. And what happened actually was Juve just kept plodding along and being very steady. And so when financial fair play came in and crippled Inter and crippled AC Milan, Juve was just steady Betty moving right along and their ability to be steady. And it didn't help having a large parent organization to help move debt around. uh, It allowed them to be in a better financial footing and allowed them to create the dominant cycle that they have been in up until this year, which is another problem I have with it because Juve doesn't get their, their just desserts for being stupid these past couple of years, which I really was hoping that they would get. <laughs> that's uh, a little bit. That's beside the yeah. point. But, but yes, financial fair play, I think was, I can't even say it was the right idea. I think that it was in the ballpark of the right idea and just horrifically executed, which many things that UEFA has done over time. <laughs> if you didn't have that, well, first of all, let's go ahead and say financial fair play did not prevent, it's not perfect because it didn't prevent the folding of Bury, right? It didn't prevent right. uh, a couple of other clubs from Bolton. Yeah, yeah, Bolton. It did nothing for those it clubs. Didn't, it didn't prevent, um, uh, you know, a lot of the Serie A clubs from, being in serious financial straits and yet and yet uh you know financial fair play just trucked on and and so we're in a position now where it forced teams in italy to start regulating how they spend money Milan almost folded i don't think people realize how close to the blender milan was toward the end of the Yong Hong Lee era. If Elliot isn't there, if it's a different setup than Yong Hong Lee needing a backer to buy the team to begin with, if it was just Yong Hong Lee bought the team outright, Milan's gone. They're they're like at City D starting over again. Maybe somebody would have come in and bought him, perhaps, but that's a huge gamble. And a lot of teams don't have that backing. They don't. They didn't have that extra person to come in and and help buy that asset and act as a stopgap. So financial fair play is helping teams realize they have to spend more wisely. A lot of teams are still spending like drunken sailors, mm-hmm. but those are the outliers. I think a lot of teams in Italy have had to change the way they do things. The Atalanta is showing the way in mm-hmm. developing talent. And moving talent on and being cash flow positive, which is for Italy unheard of because they, you know, their stadium isn't like this new modern thing that they, I believe, I don't believe they own that stadium outright, but they're cash flow positive. They're showing the way to do it and they're highly competitive. They're third in the league. So uh, financial fair play, terrible. There have been some, some benefits to it but in the end minimal yeah minimal but we have to let these billionaires go we can't allow them to hang around and and 
Because it will only get worse. It will only get worse. Perfect. And Tommy is coughing. Uh, IDV. IDV. Independiente del Valle. I mean, yep. yeah. Uh, them, Atalanta, Defensa, all prime examples. Yep. You can do it a different way. Uh, can I give you a, a really badly timed uh, set of quotes from Alexander Sheffrin, the head of UEFA? By all means. So this I'd was from if you didn't. This was from Reuters, uh, March third, twenty twenty. Remember where we were, March third, twenty twenty. Um, at least on this side of the Atlantic, we had not had things shut down yet. Uh, lots of people were not too worried about what was going on with uh, that, you know, pandemic thing that was happening in some parts of the world. Uh, Alexander Seferin was very proud of himself. Um, he gave a speech to the European football administrators and said, should we be ashamed of our success to be considered by many as the most important sports organization in the world? In the current four-year cycle from 2016 to 2020, this is Seferin's quote, UEFA will have generated more than 15 billion euro in revenue, more than double the 6.6 billion euro or so that FIFA will make over the same period, and twice as much as the IOC is able to generate in this same cycle. The total cumulative TV audience for a month-long UEFA euro is more than 30 times that of the American Super Bowl. The UEFA Champions League final is the most watched annual football club event in the world. Should we be ashamed of this commercial success? Should we be ashamed that together we, the national associations, leagues, and clubs, have made European football the greatest success story of modern day sport? And then he went on and on and on. Um, he listed the success of the countries before insisting that the huge revenues were only justifiable if UEFA stuck to purpose over profit and continued to support grassroots football and social campaigns. He said, when purpose over profit becomes profit over purpose, it is time to raise the alarm. Football is not simply a business like any other. It has a history, tradition, and structure that must be respected. He says, we are the guardians of the game. 15 Hmm. billion euro in a four-year cycle. But then they came out and said that they're going to cut the prize money going out to the clubs for the next four or five years in Champions League. Said that in October. You, you know who's going to take notes on all of this is probably Mark Emmert in the NCAA. <laughs> God. In <laughs> terms of how much money can we generate and not give it to anyone else? Uh huh. Because again, as we've beaten this point into the ground, we'll dig it up until you can beat it in again. It's amazing to think that anyone would consider UEFA the good guys here. Right. Nobody is. UEFA That's what's so not frustrating. The, but, but, I mean, the way people are kind of phrasing things, they kind of leave it open to, like, wow. well, we have to defend UEFA. No, 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 you don't. I promise. I promise the, you don't. And the, the question going on in the, the Twitch pitch was, what does UEFA do with all that? And, and they, Seferin did say in that he was specifically getting into, like, the purpose and the things that they are supposed to do with it. I don't think they put all 15 million out for the good of the game because no, it's not a zero based budgeting from them. No, no. Um, so where does it go? I don't know. Um, don't know how much goes. The clubs want more money because they feel like they're making it. UEFA didn't want to give them more money. That's why we are where we are today. That's not going to go away. Um, any which way. And I don't know where this is going to go. Um, I could see it going a million different ways, to be perfectly honest. I could see this all being a lot of bluster if these clubs have not signed agreements that are binding. Could somebody get cold feet? Yep. After the responses they've gotten in the, the last 24 hours? Yep. Right. Can they get out of anything that's been signed? I don't know. I don't know what's been signed. Um, do they want to? I don't know. Uh, Here, you know here's the thing that we have not talked about, and in, in, if any of our uh, our new English fans uh, and, and listeners and on the Twitch pitch per- want to chime per- in. Sorry, Perfect Tommy said, I wonder how many UEFA family members run the charities. Right. Exa- yeah, fantastic <laughs> question on that one. <sighs> the ultras in Italy are going to have a say in this. and They haven't yet, have they? they I have not heard anything yet. That's odd. I think they're waiting to hear from... The, the, from these organizations who have been trying desperately to sever their relationships with the, these ultra groups. 
how much money they're going to get because in Italy, especially ticket allocation is a, is part of the ultra business model. Selling chakis outside of the stadium is part of the business model. They have not been able to do that for a year. Now what's going to happen when they start opening the stadium back up and these ticket allocations are the relationships just different. They don't have to worry about appeasing the ultras. How does that fit into this whole thing? It will factor in. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do think, even though there are a lot of teams that are very solid in the Real Madrid, Barcelona. Yeah. Juve especially, but there are some teams that are not going to be able to weather this storm. I don't think. And I want to see which one cracks first. Well, you, you want something along those lines in a different country? Let's um, go. I've seen, and I think you had shared one, of somebody dropping us. He had like 600 followers because you got a bunch of that right now. Uh, Oliver Holt has more than 600 followers. He is the chief sports writer for the Mail on Sunday. I know we talk about the Daily Mail all the time, but this is a guy who has a lot of clout. His tweet from 23 minutes ago, hearing the first cracks may be beginning to appear in the ugly, misshapen edifice of the ESL, told two English clubs are close to losing their nerve. Hello! Diamond hands are nearly as common or as strong as people want them to believe they are. Hey. <clears throat> Roman Abramovich is someone who does not want people poking around in his finances. <laughs> that's true. I, I, that's true. That's very true. So, I can imagine that's an accurate statement. Oh, boy. So especially considering the adversarial nature mm-hmm. of, uh, of Downing Street and, uh, and the Kremlin at the moment, I would venture to say that if there were any feelers put out quietly to the uh, – to Mr. Abramovich and said, hey, look, you know, we can either start doing radical teardowns of your finances or maybe you could reconsider this whole thing and just kind of help bring it into it. <laughs> I can see that happening. I do not see Arsenal being that team. I think Kroenke's that was 112%. Arsenal and Spurs are like, please, please, no. Yeah. We want to and do this. I think, I think Kroenke's 112% in. Uh, Dan Levy, I, I – I mean, uh, the he's other one. Fill up that stadium. The other the same one. Same with Arsenal. Manchester got, you, City. Yeah. The the and D Graham said he had seen something. I think that so was he, what your your crazy said rumor he, he had. Pep, what if what if Pep doesn't want to go along with this? <sighs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I think it was Jamie Carragher who was basically yeah. saying that about Klopp. Was he's the most powerful man at the club? If he walked tomorrow, it'd be a riot. Right. Um, it's putting those guys in a tough spot because they want to coach their team, and that's what they're there for. They don't want to get yeah. into this this nonsense. But um, there, the, I had seen the Chelsea and Manchester City cracks thing, but I hadn't seen it from a reputable source until just then. Um, there's also, since we're uh, just in a soccer over there show, and we haven't done this yet. <laughs> Mondays with Reddit. It had come up on the Twitch pitch wondering when broadcasters would get into the fray here. Well, um, in Australia, Sports Flick have issued a statement confirming that it won't be finalizing its Champions League bid, quote, in light of the current uncertainty in European football. This is despite the service reportedly being issued a bank guarantee in order to secure the rights. They're like, yeah, we're going to hold up on that. Yeah. Now the next step in that is the people who have already they're in contracts with right. UEFA or you know these leagues, and they're like, "Well, wait a minute, um, we paid for X, and you're going to deliver Y. Uh, where's our refund?" Mm-hmm. Right, right. And there's a difference in the product that you are delivering to our doorstep. So. Uh, keep keep in mind one of the um, one of the more financially stable teams in Australia is a uh, is Melbourne City. Mm-hmm. So, as part of the city football group, 
There's something to be said about that. Uh, and and yeah. look, and yes, for anyone who is new listening to the Twitch pitch, we appreciate you. Yeah, a bunch uh, of new folks listening and, and yeah, watching and interacting. In. And, and look, we, go we ahead. We really Nick. try not to be that show to, to, to give you the, the video clips of the, the yelling and screaming and whatnot. We really <laughs> try to break down as much as we can the situation as it stands. We, we attempt. We attempt. try to be real about it. And, and I mean, Burn hits at it. And we talked about – I talked about it this morning because, I mean – Guys, I've, I've grown up in Atlanta. I've grown up as a, a fan of the sport, but detached from it for a large part of my life when I was you know, falling in love with it because I didn't have a team to follow. Um, I didn't have a professional team in Atlanta that I could follow while I was here because I did miss the indoor version of the attack. Oh, no. Um, until I was 18 with the, the Ruckus. The attack was, I mean, indoor's fun, but, you know, they only lasted two years anyway, so I would have been a very sad kid. Um the the ruckus. I mean, I remember how I felt when the ruckus uh, was the first owner pulled out. I didn't really know that much about that one because I was still learning it. Second owner got them. It was the the second owner who was pulling out, and it was in the middle of the season, <laughs> in the second season. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm done. I'm 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 gone." And I remember when that news broke and, and how it felt and what that was like. I mean, it's different than this, but that was the first thing I had to do with this. I haven't grown up in this kind of system. That was 1996. MLS had just started. Atlanta wasn't an MLS. It was in a second division league that played at a high school. And, I mean, you can go on and on about it. Like, I don't know how European fans have felt about it. And I think it's different, as Burns says, in Germany versus how it is in Italy versus how it is in Spain, how it is in England. I mean, one of the things in Spain that has come up, and specifically around Barcelona and Real Madrid, is they're not, the fan bases are not freaking out in the same way because they've went through this with Eurobasket, which basically has been the same idea. They had competing Champions League-like tournaments for basketball in Europe, and eventually Eurobasket became the one and now you don't have teams leaving Eurobasket. You're in, like, for a while, you, you, depending, I guess, on your history, you'd get a three-year license or a five-year license or a ten-year license. Now it's you're in, you're in. And that's your European competition in addition to your domestic competition. So they've kind of been through it on that side, so they're not freaking out the same way. We're hearing a lot over here, obviously, about the English perspective. Shared language, totally get it. But I think it's a different one. It's definitely a different one than what I have. I have a different perspective than you, Nick, because I haven't lived your life. You know, I mean, I haven't grown up and lived and died with a, an Italian team that has been through now what they've been through. So we all have our own perspectives. It doesn't make our perspective right or wrong. It's just us right. being real. You mm -hmm. know, and, and yeah, we're not trying to, to get the cool, like, yelling and ranting and throwing things clip and turning into a tomato face. No. We're just... Uh we're just talking soccer with you guys. That's all. Right. That's it. I'm, I'm drinking my, uh, my, my Aperol spritz and, um, uh, trying to find some sort of, <laughs> some sort of joy in all of this. So, uh, you know, There's for anyone no out there, to be found, so joy is all we got. That's it. That's it. The little things, little things in life. Now we have, we have the French perspective, which is <gasps> great. Um, oh, dear. Vanille chaos. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, responded to Burns said, in France, we don't really accept it, which, again, PSG said no, although there's been some talk that if it happens, maybe they would then come back to the door. That's speculation. Um, Vanille said, not, in, not as Germany, but still not accepted here. And even I, an NFL and PSG fan who wanted a big league, can't accept this project. So I think it's different everywhere. I think everybody yeah. comes at this from their own perspective. And, you know, they're all going to be a little different. I mean, I'm, they're, they're talking about it. Right now, um, on TIC in Argentina, and they are planning the Superliga Sudamericana on Presión Alta and, and doing exactly what we For talked sure. about today. If South America did this, what would their league look like? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's – I don't know if they're arguing for or against or just being ridiculous as they are prone to be. Right. But, yeah, like, everybody's got a different thing. I mean, MLS is talking about merging with Mexico that would essentially be a CONCACAF Super League because there's not any other teams outside of those two leagues that would be at that level. I mean, I, it's all over the place. I, yeah, it, 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 with I, I've seen split reaction among Juve fans, but U, Juve supporters, they say, some of them say, look, you know, yay, bring it on, let's go. 
And then I'm also seeing like, this is terrible. Like this isn't who we are. That, that, that's why the Italian government response is going to be very interesting because there is a strong sense of nationalism still in, within Italy. So uh, I, I would be shocked if this went completely unanswered. Right. Now, what they may do is the typical Italian response, which is we are going to threaten to essentially um, send, uh, you know, Guardia di Finanza to the door to kick in and claim all assets, and then they do nothing. So that's it's completely possible that any of those uh, options are on the table. So it's, but uh, Agnelli is not exactly the most popular person in in Italy right now, considering that. Um, Gianni Agnelli was av- avocado, and he was uh, the you know the man who essentially saved saved the, the Italy from communism in some circles. Yeah. You would say that. So it's pretty uh, pretty substantial fall from grace for the the Agnelli family at the moment. Yeah. So here's part of the Florentino Perez uh, Il Chiringuito oh, extravaganza. Boy. Which part? Uh, the, the French is the PSG, the PSG issue. Ah. He says PSG were not invited as of today. We haven't even <laughs> spoken to German clubs. We I can buy the German clubs. part. I can buy the German part. The PSG has not been invited as of today. Yeah, right. Well, here, here's here we go. He says we are now 12 clubs. We want to become 15. If PSG and Bayern Munich refuse, the Super League competition will not be canceled. And uh, he goes, this is a BS but he used the full term. Yeah, that part was funny. Um, then you're also getting uh, from a, a radio program, a different radio program, El Partidazo de Colp, or Colpe. Um, they say, and this is from Isaac Fauto, who is one of their journalists, um, La Liga will not expel Real Madrid, Barcelona, or Atleti from the competition, among other things, because they believe that the Super League is a project that is, quote, born dead, nace muerto, and will not be carried out. I wonder if the Spanish taxman has anything to say about any of this, which is why they are so certain that it's dead. That might be the next step to making hey, it Siri, dead. Hey, show me a bluff that got called. That's right. <laughs> Oh, the Spanish boy. tax man is undefeated. It's yeah. true. So, uh-huh. if, they, if they got Lionel Messi to make payments, they're undefeated. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah, Perez said uh, Barcelona are going through a difficult economic situation. Laporta immediately understood and accepted, like all the great clubs in the world, this Super League will save the entire world of football. The entire world. From what? Oh, what are we in an episode of Heroes? <laughs> that's right. I love yes. the hyperbole. With yeah, that's, that's what he was it going. worked uh, itself. So Jason Perez is worked pants itself here? into is that a what shoot. You're getting into? Yeah, we have worked ourselves into a shoot. Yes. Now the the game is broken. The world is going to end, and the Super League right. will, will save everybody. Florentino Perez well, will ride in on, on a beautiful, large white horse and, and bring a soccer ball to the part of the world that's about to split open and we're all about to be swallowed up. The soccer ball will save the world, and it will turn, and it will have the Super League logo on at the end. Glarsip came in with a, and so glad he's doing better. Yes, I was Glarsip. Yeah. Really happy he's doing better. He he had some complications with COVID. Yeah, he he issued a tweet where he said that Florentino wants to save uh, world football like Thanos. So it's he started calling him uh, Florent Thanos Perez. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it really like it is. It's like this super villain view. Like if any good movie. The supervillain feels like I'm I'm just misunderstood. I'm actually trying to save everyone. I'm just going to kill half the things in the universe. I mean, like, yeah, but that's not good, right? (laughs) And so Uh, it it really feels like that's where Perez is. Like, I just wish he would go full supervillain and just be like, guys, if you hate us, it's because we are the horsemen. We have the money. We have a limousine. Uh, right now, when I finish this press conference, I've got a limousine a mile and a half long filled with, with women from Ibiza, and we are going to all go, ooh. All, just go full comic you book. Hate, you go full it. heel and go if you, you yes. hate us because you ain't us. Just, just say, like, and then we're going to go on a private jet. I'm going to London. I'm shutting this. I'm shutting four blocks of London down. You can't get in where I'm going to go. Just go, oh, own it. 
Like, get out Where's of the car, like, have cars and come up with speaker systems, you know? Just go full with it. Don't do anything. At that point, you're, at that point, you're not Thanos. You're... You're Magneto with the idea of we are the future. Get on our level. Right. Perez has got this thing where Perez thinks he is the real hero. I'm riding across Pelennor Field to be the savior of the sport towards Minas Tirith. When actually he is the detachment of Gondor's army riding towards us, Gilead, into a volley of arrows. Oh, Just my God. The idea here that he is like. I, and, and I get he's using hyperbole. He knows he's using hyperbole. We know he's using hyperbole, but presenting it in the way of like, we are the savior in the future and this, that, and the other buddy. Yeah, man, you think you're going to, you think you're going to be able to paint it that way. Man, Denethor just sent your ass to Osgiliath oh, and Gothmog's yeah. waiting for you. You're welcome, Nick. We, we have half of Europe just went, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> how do you go from Marvel comics right into Lord of the Rings? How do you how do you get how do you get the Return of the King so quickly? Nah. Whoop! Uh, you're you're welcome. That's that's how. That's, that's how. how. You're that's welcome. How you're welcome. Aye. <laughs> I love Aye. It. But I mean, honestly, like you're you're it's this Aye. thing where it's I, I get it's hyperbole, but man, it's just so over the top. Like it is. I, he and he kept like, going so for so like, long. We're getting into like the Miz cutting a really bad promo. Yeah, where yeah. it's like five minutes too long. Without and, the self awareness. Yeah, yeah but we, well, is it the, the Randy Orton promo it where he takes thirty second pauses between words? That's and Triple H. Leans, he leans into the camera and he's yeah. breathing heavy and it's all lurched and. And now, <laughs> I'm gonna get a chair. And see, I'll, I'll always argue my favorite one is still the one where. Reigns got in the ring and stood there for like oh. two or three minutes while they booed mm-hmm. after he'd taken down Undertaker and just said, this is yep. my house now, and walked away. That's it. That's that is probably, that's probably his best work. Yeah. Did you guys see yeah. how the, the social media folks at Leeds United have been going after Liverpool? A little bit, <laughs> yes. No. Beautiful. A little okay, bit. Okay, so... It started. I'll get, I'll, get John, schedule. I I'll get to the schedule in, in a minute. I haven't but seen all of it. In, in discussing today's result, here's how it was phrased Full time. Hashtag LUFC hold Super League side Merseyside Reds to a 1 1 draw after late Urente equalizer. I'm with it. I'm hip. <sighs> and apparently they were they were they were wearing or they had brought into the uh, arena today shirts for for the warm up that said earn it. Yeah, they wore the them, but they did one thing that I think was disrespectful. They put, put them in putting it in the Liverpool locker room. Yeah, that's not cool. No, that's not cool at all. Klopp was really ticked off about that, and I'm with him. Um, again, it's not the player's decision, and you mm-hmm. can't put them in. You can't ask them to do that. that that's not right. That that that's incredibly disrespectful in my opinion. I, I like a lot of things about Leeds and what they've done this year, but nah, that's not cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's but not when cool. you because it, it's, it's not fair to put the players in that, and it's not fair to bring that up before the game. It's not fair to put stuff in their locker room. It, it, it's already difficult, and I mean they were getting heckled by their own fans on the way in and getting things screamed at them like they had anything to do with this. That's not cool. Yeah, that's yeah. not cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's look. It's gonna happen though. I mean, yeah, no, and, no, no. It is, but for lead for leads to do it, fine. Don't put shirts in the other team's locker room and like expect them to put them on. That's not cool. Yeah, no. that's that's putting them in an unfair spot. That's yeah. that's my. I'm fine yeah. shading yeah. them in the sense of keep calling them. No, no, that right part absolutely. Them, but no, don't no, no, put no. The shirts in. Yeah, yeah, no. absolutely. The 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 tweet like turning them into a, a pro evolution soccer team. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's great, but. Don't yeah. don't put shirts in their locker room. That, that's not. Good. I'm waiting for Bimont de Calcio. I'm waiting for that. Uh, somebody will do it. No, no Juve. Mm-hmm. Just Bimont de Calcio came in today. They left with a loss. Guess they're more worried about Super League. Right. Hey. That, that All right. Was... So what's the what's the Twitch Italian Twitter, Twitter can get like uncomfortably petty. Yeah, I yes. appreciate that. Yeah. Yes, it can. We got to make picks, and we got to talk about our picks of the week from last week. We do. We do. We, yeah, do, we do have do. to get into that, and we probably should start heading do. in that direction. 
Yeah, um, I think. Do we know? Because I know I did just about as well as the social media accounts for all of these teams. We will we will get into that in one second. I wanted to see if there were any other highlights from uh, our, our good friend Florentino Perez, who was on El Chiringuito TV, and I felt like he was there for like two hours. It seems like because yeah. he just kept talking about things. Um, Trickle down economics, baby. Yeah, and the later into it, it just got a little more ridiculous and more ridiculous at a time. Our Keynesian expert. Florentino Perez. Yeah, it, it got pretty absurd. Um, he he said that there there's no way that they'll stop the current Champions League and kick Real Madrid and Chelsea and Manchester City and Manchester United and Arsenal out, which I tend to agree with because I don't think they're, they'll legally be able to pull that one off. Um, he said that, uh, well, he, he defended the honor of Andrea and Yali, which was really funny. Um President Sefer and insulted him today. It's not possible. Well, yes. He's a clown. He's a clown <laughs> yes. with a unibrow. I mean, yes. The Super League is not for the rich. <laughs> okay. No, just the super rich. Yeah. Okay, USA. Uh, Boris Johnson said he will do everything to cancel the Super League because they explained to him that the Premier League would disappear. It's false. It's not true. Everything will go back to normal. I mean, uh, again, I, I don't know if it's the worst thing in the world. The Premier League's the one that's going to be changed the most because it's six teams, not three. Right. Um, da, 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 da. He says that the, the Super League teams won't be excluded from this current Champions League. He says it's protected by law. Um, I thought he had said something about the whole FIFA situation. I think he said that FIFA won't ban players, et cetera, et cetera, which I tend to think they won't either. I don't think they have the guts to do that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if they need to pick that fight. They're not keeping Kevin De Bruyne out of the Euros. Mm-mm. Now the the UEFA fight on that will be very interesting, and I'll I'd be curious to see how far they go with it. They won't keep Kevin De Bruyne out of the 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 World Cup. No way. Yep. And they can't do anything about South American players and African players and North American players who are huh. playing in Europe who had nothing to do with us. I don't think they should do anything to the players. Period, because they didn't make this decision. They signed contracts with teams, and again, unless you're going to allow them to break their contracts, which then you're going to have more lawsuits, you, you can't ban the players. The players aren't the ones who should be punished here. That's that's pretty much it with uh, Florentino. Then he started talking about uh, Real Madrid, and, and he said, I love Sergio Ramos, but we're in a very bad financial situation at Real Madrid. Nobody puts <laughs> money into this club. Will he leave? Well, I mean, that's the, he, he's being consistent. He said that's why they, they need to do the Super League, because they, they need to save everything. He said, Mm -hmm. will Sergio Ramos leave the club? I didn't say that. Many things can happen. We will think about it at the end of the season. He said, Cristiano Ronaldo will not come back at Real Madrid. Does not make sense. He has a contract with Juventus. Um, He said, Vinicius Jr. is untouchable. Uh, He said, Zidane is happy. He's a top manager. The contract is there. We'll see what happens at the end of the season. Mourinho, question mark, in the three years with us, Jose has helped us. We must thank him, too. Wow, that's magnanimous to thank Jose. He's, 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 feel, he's feeling day. good. Yeah, that's late in the interview. He, maybe maybe there were some uh, things. In, maybe there were some, some drinks involved or something. I don't know. I don't know that how they be. how they roll on El Chiringuito. God, that would be amazing. Oh, on, to get them all drunk like, as crazy you, as they you, already you are? You give him like, oh, yeah, you give him like, I don't know, man. You give him like a mojito or something at the start of the interview. Yeah. And then you just start like logging how full or empty that drink is as the interview goes along. And make sure that it doesn't get past a certain level. The second that it gets like a, like an yeah, inch right. low, you sit there and you refill it back to where it's full. The Reg- the the, Ve- the Las Vegas refill model. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, <laughs> we sure. used to do we used, used to do that to my <laughs> we used to do that to my uncle at Oktoberfest in Helen, Georgia. There you uh, go. The man would drink himself sober, and. <laughs> He would just, I, I'm not kidding, the man would drink so much, he'd be like stone sober by the end of the night. It's like it was a big circle. But every time his, his stein would get halfway empty, my stepdad would pour beer into it, and he'd look at it and go, oh, just refill it. Okay, I guess I got to get rid of that too. Jeez. Good grief. Um, They're bo- they both are gone now. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely attributing this, well. this phase of life to that. <laughs> because my God. Well. Um, on that Jared note, Smith dark turn. Seriously, always yeah. good for that. <laughs> on, on, on that note, um, uh, Jimmy Fance. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? Snowman. Uh, the the real winners are the sports lawyers in Europe. Good grief! Sounds like Billable endless hours. lawsuits. Yeah, it's there will be billable hours. Oh yes. 
All right. We do a picks of the week thing for those of you who are new. We pick a game uh, every day in the week. It's We, we get, what, six games because we don't pick the Monday because that's when we do the show. And we recap what happened the previous week. We, up to this point, have done this eight times or nine, nine times. Nine. We get up to nine? Eight. No, we did nine because I, I was five out of eight, and now I'm yes. five out of nine going into this week's results. Yeah. Uh, squeeze a humble brag right in there. Of course I yep. did. What are you? What are you kidding? He's Come cut, on. He's cutting his own promo, Jerry. Of he's course. To cut my promo. Yes. Uh, Nick has how many wins? Enough. Two. Uh, let's see. If it was five, two, and one heading in, I think this is. Um, oh, that was eight. So this is week nine. So sorry. Yeah, it was five, two, and one. So yeah. Nick had two. Jarrett won the last week with an incredible week. Five, mm-hmm. five out of six he got. Yep, that is um, true. I was four out of six. Uh, Jarrett got me last week. It was a good competition. I was really impressed. This week, not so much. We all kind of stunk. And Well, not all of us. No, I thought we all kind of stunk, basically, was what you had said. Mm-mm. No. No, one of us didn't. Steve. Here comes the well, I know break. somebody won, but yeah. I, I didn't think the numbers were anything like five wins out of six. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the whole point no, of kind of stinking. I know somebody won because somebody has to be the best out of the four. And Say that again? <laughs> Here some, comes. Some, what? Somebody won. Huh? I'm, I'm getting to it. Somebody See, look, won. Somebody's got to win the NFC South every year. Exactly. It, it, look, we have team. down weeks. It's okay. We can't get them all right. I mean, we're good, but we're not that good. So, I asked the question, because I didn't know where it was, and he walks away. I asked the question, going into the last day, mm-hmm. where things stood. Yep. And John Nelson was in the lead, going into the last day. Well, I was seven behind the individual who won. I was seven... Don, you're confusing the hell out of me. I asked you on Saturday where it was, and you were leading, correct? No. No, I said I was literally seven juice boxes behind. No, you person. didn't. You were leading. That's what no, you told you us. Said seven juice bo- you said that you were seven juice boxes ahead of me. Yes. And I said, for the first time, I hope I lose. Oh, okay. Then you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm you're trying right. to give you credit, man. Nah. I got so far. Ay, Dios mio. So John was actually leading going into the last day. He had been 0 for 7 at one point in, in recent times. That is true. And every me, John, and Jared all had the same pick on the last day. What was the game? It was Atalanta and Juve. That is correct. And we all had a draw, except for Nick, who had Atalanta to win. And if Nick got that right, he was going to win the week. And if you watched the game, you saw that at the very, very end of the game, 87th Mm -hmm. minute, a deflected goal is what costs John Nelson his first win in the Picks of the Week competition, and now winning for the third time, Nick Leafy. Three and three with a plus, a 268. It's the Warlord. First of all, the American dream does the road. Here we go. It's very proud. Our European audience is so confused. The tremendous ability of the runner-up, Mr. John Nelson, the mouth of the South himself. An honorable man, a man who did his finest, yet came up just the slightest bit short. The American dream is aware of this. However, the American dream is aware that someone in this group has not conducted himself in such a gentlemanly fashion. Jason Longshore, Uh-oh. I saw you in the DMs in the chats. No respect. No. No honor. No. There's no honor among these in the first place. No, that's true. So let me tell you something next time, Jason Longshore, you tell the rest of your little friends to wait outside up in the other clouds in the atmosphere because I reverse the stratosphere for us. Because next time, right now in this world, of- there's a lot of people out there hurting right now because of this, this, this impaleness that's been put now by the Super League. The American dream is aware of that. So right now, the American dream is reaching out. Because right now out there, there's a, there's a Manchester United fan, been a fan for 25 years, told his club leaving, slap him on the button, said pick another one. The American dream is aware of you. 
The American dream is aware of all the Italian fans out there eating their marinara and whatnot. Whereas the team is moving on. All right, you barely the want American a deflected goal. This is a little I over the top. I have from you, Jason Longshore. No respect and no honor. No honor no, among these, none. my friend. Because right now the American dream is reaching out. My hand is touching your hand. And together we will get over these hard We're singing Hey Caroline? Moves, you like this? these sunglasses or show you do, daddy? What did you? What the what? hell just I need happened? To know what soccer over there? Hard times, brother. That's what that was. No, it wasn't. That what was garbage. Station, what gas station just on the other side of the Alabama state line from 1997? Did you spend eight ninety nine buying those That's sunglasses? A good from? question. Those are Oakley M frame sunglasses. I will have you know. Oh my. They look like the, they, they just remind me of the Folklies you could buy just across the state line on I-20. Oh, man. You could go by. You used to have, like, all these tables in New York. You could walk by and it had all of them. The M-frames, the A-wires, all of them. You could buy anything you wanted. <sighs> I just – I remember uh, loading up the family van, me and my step, my step cousins, and we all went to Huntsville to, like, the Space Center. And one of my cousins bought a pair that looked really similar to that along with the fake candy cigarettes that you can only get in Alabama. Oh, yeah. There's a little chalk dust you could blow on, and a little chalk dust comes out. Oh, yeah, that, that right. absolutely made it better. That's right. Well, let me explain something to you three cartoon characters. <sighs> Nick, you still have two more weeks you have to win to tie me. It doesn't overall. matter. Your no, it absolutely is, does. Your last cut, Jason Longshore. Sure. In the mortal words of Outcast, you're only as funky as your last cut, and I am the funkiest of them all this week, daddy. <laughs> last time I checked, teams were getting invited to the Super Good League, not geez. based off their last cut. Wow. Just wow, saying. Twitch pitch. Are you that's hearing? What the, I mean, he, you're going to, you know, that's, that's facts. That's F-A-X. You, you guys hearing this? I'm just saying. Wow. I want to hear which pitch reaction. Let's go. I'll give you some of the reactions. Let's um, go. DM Tim, screw the Europeans. I'm confused about your promo. Uh, Badger <laughs> wanted you to switch to the Beckham accent. Uh, Burns thought you were doing Mike Tyson. Uh, Martha, oh. oh my God, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> hard times, Looney Tick was on with you. Uh, Katie Weaver says, LOL, I've just tuned in. What is Nick doing? <laughs> Alex Pacine, wrestling is something I don't understand. It's entertainment, Alex. That's all. Patrick, it's entertainment, man. That's Patrick it. says, is Nick conscious? No. Yes, quite. No. Uh, all spritz, man. Hutcho, that was different. <laughs> um, Looney asks, so who's Harley Race in this picture? Well, it's probably me because I'm the oldest. Um, Actually, I would be James J. Well, let's see. So if it's the James four, J. Dillon. I can James see James J. J. Dillon. Well, James J. Dillon or uh, uh, let's see, or uh, probably what Oli if it's the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Gustavo had no idea what you were doing, Nick. No, it's okay. But Gustavo. he supported you because you, you didn't pick against Ooh. his Independiente, and you know, and you got it wrong. But anyway, um, matter. Mile High said I was way too soon with the, that comment, which is is ac- absolutely accurate. Um, Kefsi points out that he also said you focus on the past, your ass will be a has what. That's that's also accurate. That was that's said. Right. That's right. That's um, accurate. No, it's accurate. Badger wants to know who's playing the role of Gordon Soley. That might be me. That's possible. that's how I learned anatomy and physiology growing up was by watching Gordon Soley. If I win another one, I'll do the Steiner math promo. Oh, <laughs> so so Nick won and he got to to talk his uh, ish. Ron yes. Digital, as as I will uh, paraphrase and change a little bit yeah. for the family friendly audience. It, it will um, not repeat this week, so don't worry. If you if you tune in next Monday, you're I, you're going to hear someone else cut the. Program. You're going to hear we'll Jason see. discussing right. something. I don't know now. Now see now y'all are doing the sandbagging thing, and now you're downplaying. I'm uh, not sandbagging. No, you're not. But everybody else will. That's fine. That's fine. Now you're putting all the pressure on me. I'll do my best. Um, okay. Nine times we've done this. I've won five. Nick's won three. Jarrett's won one, but I think Jarrett had the best overall week ever. Yes. And John almost won last week, but not quite. That pl- was two and four at a plus 28, literally. Well, wait, you were two and Okay, you were two but, and four. Okay, but you it. were cash flow positive, though. Yeah, so yes, that's that good. Th- that's always good. That That's always a positive. Yeah. You, you two were the only cash flow positives, correct? That is correct. Okay, so absolutely credit for that. We want, we want people 
if you are crazy and degenerate enough to listen to this nonsense, we, we want to keep you cash flow positive if we can. Right. Hopefully. Possibly. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Burns says John's due. But not ourselves necessarily. And for anyone who doesn't no. know, just YouTube Dusty Roads yes. hard, hard times, times promo. Yes. And yes. Patrick said John is definitely Gordon Soli in this scenario. Indeed. Um, Burns says John is due. And he is uh, lobbying for Gustavo, Alex, and Burned to be able to help John. And that has been denied. Um, oh, wow. That's been denied. That's not allowed well, around here. Champion, I got to make the rules for the week. No, you don't get to make that rule. No, no, no. That's not, that's not, you, oh, you get to pick two games and you get to veto. Here. Are you Juventus now? Yes. Changing the rules mid game? Yes, 100%. Okay. All right. All right, Andre. He, no, here's the thing I will, I will say John can pull up the Twitch pitch just like anybody else. So if John is clever enough to stall and, and make sure you guys chime in, then of course. But we're not going to sit here and say, okay, John, what does your collective have to say? What's your stable voting for over there? No. Stable. You're going to have to make a pick. We're not waiting for X-Pac and Road Dog and Billy Gunn to make your, your selections for you. You're going to have to do this yourself. Yes, our, our, like our new friends in France and England are like, what the hell are these guys un- on? I don't know what we're I'd doing. like to think that his stable is actually the wildly underused uh, luchador stable from WCW. I was going to go with <laughs> the Leparka's oddities. Look, as long as I nowhere. could bring in Laparca. Yeah, I was going to go with the, the oddities, but I couldn't remember all of them. So, no, I, I couldn't do that one. All right. So, again, the rules, the way this will go. Nick gets two picks this week of, of which game to do. We pick a game a day. Everybody else gets one, so that's five. There is one consensus pick, and it was already suggested on the Twitch pitch earlier, and I I think it's a good suggestion. The Gummy Bear Cup should be the consensus Mm -hmm. pick. It is a trophy. Uh, uh, The people have spoken. We will will give the the will of the people. I'm good with this. So the Gummy Bear Cup will be the consensus pick. Is that Saturday? Uh, Is it Saturday or Sunday? Hang on. I can't remember which day it is, so that will take that day for planning yeah, purposes. Yeah, will take that day since it won't be a, a double, a double dip for any day. Uh, the twenty fifth, so that Sunday. is Sunday. So the last day. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So that's out of the way. So we've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Nick's got two picks to go. We will start with Tuesday, the twentieth. We got. Copa Libertadores getting underway. Your big games in that. You got Santos and Barcelona of Ecuador. That's in Brazil. Um, you've got Club Always Ready hosting oh, Internacional. Love that, name. love that name. Ooh, that's a good one. You got Velez hosting Flamengo. That's an interesting one. Um, you could go into the Sudamericana with Goianense hosting Newell's. We get El Mono going into uh, the Sudamericana with Newell's. That could always be fun. Um, you've got Doce de Octubre hosting Rosario Central. You do have Chelsea hosting Brighton. Yay. No. You've got Bayern hosting Leverkusen. You've got Hellas Verona hosting Fiorentina. Mm. You could, and this might be it for John. You got the championship. You got Brentford and Cardiff. You got Norwich and Watford. You got Preston and Derby. You got Sheffield Wednesday and Blackburn. And you got Swansea and QPR. Somebody's got to pick something here at some point. I will. Uh, I'm going to suggest. Could go League One. Shrewsbury and Wigan. I'm going to suggest. Jesus, please. Watford no. and Norwich. <laughs> okay. I want to give I want to give John every opportunity. Oh jeez, this is getting ridiculous. To cut a promo, I really want to hear <laughs> John. This is ridiculous. So Norwich and Watford. See, Burned is now. Lab will be happy about this. Burned is trying to 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 get John to cheat. I don't know if he is uh, capable of playing the role of Inter Miami in this contest. Um, Norwich and Watford. So let's see what we got in recent form here. The last few times they've played, they played in December. Watford won at home 1-0. Mm, recent See, form. Norwich just clinched going up, right? And that's, yeah, and that's the biggest element in all of this, probably. That's your largest intangible if I were Jimmy the Greek. <laughs> they just clinched going up. We're talking about Jimmy the Greek's intangibles. I like it. They lost to Bournemouth uh, on the weekend, but they went up. They had 
one seven of nine prior to that. Yep. On the flip side, Watford lost their last match as well, but they had won seven of eight prior to that. So about the same form, and it's fairly close on the odds, John. Uh, Norwich is a plus 141, your draw is a plus 233, and Watford is a plus 204. And Norwich is the home team, and Nick, or no, we go in reverse order. Sorry, who was last? Was it me or Jarrett? Uh, Jarrett went over. Oh, yeah. Jarrett. Wow. All right, you get to pick first, Jarrett. Have at it. That's a big turnaround going from five to zip. Um, You know, that's that's how I do it, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, give, me, give me the numbers again, John. I was too busy listening to the uh, violin shrieking in my ear at the thought of not winning a single damn game last week. Norwich plus 141. Your draw a plus 233. Watford a plus 204. Give me Norwich. I just I like Norwich in general, so I'm just going to blindly take them. Also, I do love Tim Mapuki. Fair enough. It was a decent fantasy pick until about the quarter poll last year. So I'm next. Um, mm-hmm. It's one and two in the championship. Is that Norwich? But yeah, I'm going to go draw. All right. <laughs> Gustavo and Burned are trying to figure out codes to help John in the Twitch bid. <laughs> uh, John, you are up. I hope your, your crew has helped you out with this one. I'm going draw. You're going draw. Okay. Nick? I will side with Michelle and say Norwich. Okay. So two for Norwich and two draws. All right. Wednesday. Everybody's got a pick left. Wednesday. Independiente del Valle hosting Defensa y Justicia in the Copa Libertadores. I might just take that one straight out of the gate. We've also got Monterrey and Chivas. Um... What else we have? I'm trying to see what else we got. Copa Libertadores, uh, America de Cali. Depends, how badly Fortenio. do you want to punish me? Uh, kind of badly, actually. I um, mean, the strongest in Boca is the closest odds wise. Yeah, that gets weird because it's in Bolivia. Um, the Celtic plays Rangers. Oh, Celtic plays Aberdeen. Excuse me. Yes, Wednesday. but that I don't know if I like Steve, doing that one. Stephen Glass. Yes, I mean if you you can pick it. No, emotional well being. Everybody can. I mean, this is it's up for grabs. Everybody's got to pick. Milan's play hosting Sassuolo. Juventus hosting Parma. Spezia hosting Inter. Um, Hoffenheim hosting Mönchengladbach. Dortmund hosting Union Berlin. Stuttgart hosting Wolfsburg. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, you go. Coupe de France with PSG hosting Angers. Lyon hosting Monaco in the Coupe de France. That's an interesting game, too. That's a sneaky good one. That is a sneaky good one. Um, Ooh, what are the numbers on that, John? Uh, Coupe, we're doing Coupe de France idea? Yeah, Allegedly. Monaco. Jared's not 100% convinced. We'll, we'll give you I the numbers. I want to know the numbers. Uh, Lyon is a plus 125. Draws a plus 260. Monaco a plus 198. Ooh. Even the home team gets the shade. Yeah. All right, I'll go on the board, and I'll pick a, a difficult one because of the weird home favor. The strongest hosting Boca. It's in Bolivia. Nick, you that's can veto. Great, that's a great name. You can veto if you want, Nick. You going to roll with it? Uh, no, we'll roll with it. No, we'll, we'll do All right, it. I kind of want to do Independiente Del Valle in defensive, but this one's kind of a fun one. And you've got odds on it, John? Yep. All right, what are the this- odds? The strongest are plus 175. Your draw is a plus 237, and Boca is a plus 148. Boca is plus 148. What's the strongest? Plus 175. So Boca is a favorite. Yes. But it's in Bolivia, and it's weird. Yes. Yes. And I got to pick first. And because I, I was accused of chicanery last time just because you guys didn't actually do your homework on the Independiente and Racing game. Um Cheated out of it by not, a bad ref call, but it's okay. All. Not at all. Gustavo is saying, don't take Boca COVID problems. Berg was telling me to look at Gustavo, not you. Well, I can see it too. That's the whole point here. That's where you guys are going to have to come up with a better plan. 
<laughs> this is like John, seriously. John, Z up. Hijinks. Flip, sk- flip six skinny. Shift waggle three. Heavy, heavy, heavy. All right. <laughs> um, Spider two Y banana. There you go. <laughs> I will go with. What has the strongest even been doing lately? I gotta double check to make sure they're a functioning they club the at this point. Name. That's what I'm saying, man. You no, they, they've already got the strongest. They have been playing um, a little bit. the The Bolivian League is back, so they've got four games into their current season. They beat Jorge Wilsterman on the we- or a couple weekends ago, three nil. But Jorge Wilsterman had two red cards in that one. Um, <laughs> So oh, there you go. the Bolivian League is on fire. I like it. Uh, it's like I can't do it. I'm going to go draw. I kind of want to go with the strongest, but now I'm going to go draw. J- uh, John. Draw. You're going draw. Will is yelling at all of us, which is hilarious. What is Will, what is Will yelling? <laughs> He's yelling, take the Hornets about the last game. None of you are right about the, our picks for the Watford Norwich game. Will, Hello. my love of Tamu Puki overrules a lot of things. It's a very blind love that will get me into a lot of trouble. So, you know, take, take, that, take that for understanding why I am going to be wrong about most things. Fair enough. Uh, well, you got to pick something. No, you don't pick anything yet. Here, John does. You went draw. Jerry. I went draw. Or, uh, Nick, sorry. I'm trying to remember the order. Uh, all right. This is in La Paz, so uh-huh. that's uh, that's no oh, joke. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say. I will say that is a. Uh, I'll say draw on that one. I don't want to do the draw, but. It's hard for me to. I, I think Boca has enough quality. However, if they have COVID issues, little weekend, you're in La Paz. That that is the ultimate extra man. All right, Jarrett. Scared money don't make Uh-oh. money. Uh-oh. Mm. Also, I'm going to go against Boca on the simple grounds. They somehow escaped against my Argentine club, Clapole. Clapole! Copa Argentina, yes. <sighs> so close, my boys. They, 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 they did you. well. They did well. Um, I still love you. So you're going for the strongest? I'm going for the strongest. All right. The strongest enough. will survive. Fair enough. Bur- Burned is really trying to help John. It is hilarious. The strong will survive! It is that, is an, that is an 80s rock tune. Yes. Where's the stand book? Yeah, we need stand you know, bush to cut a track on that one. Enjoy it. Ay, Dios mio. Let's go to Thursday before Jarrett gets in hives because we're talking about <laughs> 80s things that are good. Um, Thursday, you guys all get picks left. We got Fluminense hosting River. Oh, I like that one. Uh, the Colombian battle in Libertadores. Atletico Junior hosting Independiente Santa Fe. We've got Atletico Nacional and Universidad Católica. Um... We've got Tito Vialba's Libertad hosting Palestino in the Copa Sudamericana. We've got Leicester hosting West Brom. Oh, yeah, we'll get right on that. We've got Barca hosting Hetafe. We've got Roma hosting Atalanta and Napoli hosting Lazio. Hmm. Ajax hosting Utrecht. And then we're getting into some really sketchy ones. Ludogorets and Siska Sofia battle between point. five and six. By the way, four points. Uh, sorry, uh, two points separating the sides. Napoli Lazio. Hmm. I don't have a pick, so I'm out. So you guys got to decide. I mean, I can keep going into like the Bulgarian league if you want. No, no, we'll, we'll do. Uh, let's do Napoli Lazio. Okay. Napoli and Lazio is Nick's pick. John, what are the numbers? Napoli plus 102, draw plus 271, Lazio plus 267. Uh, Lazio won the last time they played, but they were at home. The last time it was in Naples, Napoli won 3 1. Napoli won in the Coppa Italia in Naples, 1 0. It's been the home team winning the last four times these teams have played. 
Napoli has three wins, a loss, and a draw in their last five. Lazio has four wins in a row, and if you go back to five, they, they lost to Bayern. In league, they've won five in a row. Lazio's on fire, but it's in Naples. On fire. So this is John's pick first. Uh, Napoli. Napoli, plus 100 or so. Yeah. Okay. Nick? I am going to go Lazio. Ooh. Okay. Jarrett? Draw. Oh, everybody's going to something different. What do I do? Hmm. I'm going Napoli as well. They're at home. I think they take care of it. Reno gets it done. All right, Friday. And it is John and Jarrett with picks left, right? Yeah, because the community is the Sunday. Sunday, And Nick uh, used both of his, and I used mine. Okay, got it. Uh, Friday, we've got Liga MX. We've got Puebla hosting Pumas. We've got Tijuana hosting Necaxa. We've got Mazatlan hosting León. We've got Sporting Kansas City hosting Orlando. Hmm. We've got Arsenal hosting Everton. We've got... That's a... About it. Melbourne Victory hosting Western Sydney Wanderers. As the resident degenerate, I'll take the MLS game. Okay. Sporting Which you Kansas never City. really do in your life. No. Sporting uh, hosting European Orlando. Friends, if you enjoy gambling, I would kindly suggest you stay away from betting MLS games <laughs> at all. Yeah, if, yeah, if you're European and you just stumbled across this show, and you don't know a lot about MLS, that's one thing you should learn quickly. If, yeah. you're, if, you, if you like to drop a couple dollars here or there, MLS ain't the place to do that. No. Nope. Especially if the games are late in the U.S. We call that MLS after dark, mm-hmm. and they're guaranteed to get crazy. Yes. We call that drunk. Yes. They, they with, get drunk. With, with a J. Drunk. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! All right, so John's got the Saturday pick, but we've got Sporting in Orlando up. Uh, Sporting won on the road at Red Bull Arena in week one. Orlando drew scoreless with Atlanta at home. What are the numbers, John? Sporting's a plus 100. Your draw's a plus 275. Orlando a plus 239 on short rest. So we work it around to where Nick is picking first. Man. This does not qualify for MLS after dark, right? No, it is a seven thirty kick in in Kansas this City, is, so I think it's actually six thirty. Yeah, six thirty local. Yeah, this is exactly what MLS should be doing, which is doing like MLS on Friday night, taking yes. that prime time slot and mm-hmm. making it their own. Yes, FS one, Sporting Kansas City in Orlando. No Pato because he uh, has a lower body injury. It's the Dom Dwyer Cup. <sighs> I will take. Um, I will take. Sporting Kansas City. Jarrett? I think uh, oh, coming sorry. off the Derby's tough. Okay. Jarrett? I'm going to take Sporting Kansas City on the assumption that Pato is not 100%. I think he's out. Uh, they didn't say. They said he's got a lower body injury, but he's not going to have to have surgery. When they said he's not going to have surgery, I assumed he'd be out. Yeah. I'm guessing they're doing that MRI today. <laughs> yeah, And I didn't mean it in a mean way, and I, I don't think a lot of people meant it in a mean way, but when he went down injured, a lot of people went, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 It was uh, awkward and weird. But no, yeah. no, one in, no one enjoyed it. No. But no, it was no. just kind of like, oh, God, yeah. of course. No, no, no. Yeah. So both of, you are, both of you are going sporting. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to take the draw. Okay. I'm going draw. I think That's it's very weird. fair. I think yes. it's weird. I think early MLS is weird. I think this is exceptionally weird. John? And I'll go sporting. Okay. All right. Saturday, John's choice. T Grace hosting Monterey, <laughs> Liga MX. <laughs> okay. Um, I love that he just said that. Oh, Vito! 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 Oh, my God. What? Vito! Nick. Nick has vetoed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. You've got Cruz Azul and Atletico de San Luis. You've got Atlas. No, the rest of those two, those two are dogs. Atlas and Chivas. 
No. You got no. New York City no. hosting Cincy. You got Nashville hosting Montreal. You got Toronto hosting Vancouver. San Jose, Dallas. LAFC, Seattle. Minnesota, Real Salt Lake. New England, D.C. Philly, Do Miami. Do have a bylaw about doing multiple uh, games in one league? No. No. Okay. No, we kind of got rid of that. Okay. Colorado and Austin. Portland and Houston. Uh, you got playoffs in Columbia. Um, no. Atletico Junior and Independiente Santa Fe. You've got Huracan hosting Boca. You've got Union hosting Independiente. John, I want you to know that that veto was to save you from yourself. <laughs> you could go full was- degenerate and go Louisville City hosting Atlanta United 2. <laughs> Oklahoma City hosting Tulsa. Union Omaha hosting Tormenta. Liverpool, no, Manchester up, United, yeah. or Newcastle United, sorry. Liverpool and Newcastle, West Ham and Chelsea, that. Sheffield United and Brighton. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, Real Madrid and Real Betis. Um, Mainz hosting Bayern. Oy. Wolfsburg hosting Dortmund. Leverkusen hosting Eintracht Frankfurt. For God's sakes, pull the trigger, man. Pull I know, I'm running out of games. <laughs> um, All right, okay, so here we go. Uh-oh. He's right. riled up now. Can't wait for this madness. <laughs> He's going to pick the Russian Premier League. No. No? Three, no, no Zenit and Rotor? 3, 330 Eastern Time. Okay. On Saturday. Okay. From San Jose, California. Oh, jeez. San Jose hosting oh. FC Dallas. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm going to come to the stadium early Saturday, and John and I are going to watch this together, arm in arm. Yeah. San Jose hosting FCD. <laughs> San Jose is a plus 142. Your draw is a plus 233. FC Dallas is a plus 189, having to travel to the coast. Okay, so it will be Jarrett picking first. See how all of this lined up? Dallas had a draw in week one, Jared scoreless for Colorado. So much. San Jose <laughs> lost in week one. Jarrett, are you picking your quakes? Do you even have to ask? I'm just checking. Uh, Wando ain't going to miss a sitter again, y'all. Okay. And I get the feeling there's going to be a number of games this year for them that end up with, man, San Jose just looks sluggish. What's going to happen? Oh, 70th minute, they're going to bring on Wando and Shea Salinas and start burning things down at 30 minutes at a time because they can't play more than that because Wando is 103 and Shea Salinas is 34. <laughs> Katie Weaver says, why would you put any juice on San Jose unless it's mixed with grain alcohol? Jared, answer the question. This is why Point. we veto. Point. <laughs> Point taken, Katie. John picked it. Uh, also... Um, also, I want, no peace. I, I want I want you I want all to go back always. and watch. I want you to go back and watch that game. Uh, Tell me no. about uh, Eric Rometty. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. And for that reason, I love my, my Bonfield Bulldog, but it, for, yeah, that wasn't it last week. For what I saw last week, I'm picking Dallas to win. John, I'll go San Jose. Nick? Uh, Dallas, please. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. All Spitzville. right. And then Sunday. I'm genuinely surprised no one took the draw. Nobody genuinely took the draw. surprised. It's San That's Jose. Draw game. There's nothing about this game that says draw. It's San Jose. It's, it's like drunken ridiculousness. And then uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Monster trucks. It is Pep Guardiola in Manchester City against somebody in Tottenham. <laughs> Not Jose. He was packing up his office today, and people were hassling We've him been on the over street. This is Rush Probst. It will be Rush Probst in charge of Tottenham Hotspur. He, he will have them run half the our wishbone. European audience with that comment. He's, he's, it's the second time today he's done it on the <laughs> network. Nick, it's, it's out of control. Uh, Manchester City is a large. Oh, we gained favorite. somehow. We gained two hundred listeners in Valdosta. That's also <laughs> yes, true. It's true. They are happy. Um, it's the Gummy Bear Cup final. It, it, there's a trophy on the line. So, uh, mm-hmm. John, what are the numbers? Spoken. Manchester City minus 189. Your draw is a plus 340. And Spurs are a plus 493. Oh, wow. 
This was uh, suggested in the Twitch pitch. Uh, next week, this needs to be a, a reminder at about 8.30. We need to put a poll up um, with a couple of selections. I think I can... I, I'll have to see if I can actually do like an open-ended thing. I'm not positive I can. If not, I'll pick a couple just big games of the week, and you guys will vote on the consensus pick. But this was a suggestion. It is a trophy on the line, even though Manchester City is a big favorite. If you pick the draw, it goes to extra time, and then anything can happen. You're just saying it's going to go to extra time. So, I go first. City? Yeah. John, City? City. Nick? Uh Uh-oh. He's 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 gonna double cross himself. See, he's looking at that plus four ninety three number, and he's going. Eh. I am. He's gonna double cross himself. No, I'm not stupid. I'll take City. <laughs> Jared, are you no. stupid? I thought about getting really dumb for a moment. I'm now. I'm not gonna. Will's yelling. Give me a Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Will's out of control. How about Jared, I give you a draw. Okay. And a really irrationally, well, actually, a very rationally angry City fan base. I think City wins it in extra time, but I think it goes more than 90 minutes and everyone's upset. No one enjoys it. <laughs> Only our se- our season's always. going down the toilet. <laughs> we lost to Chelsea in a semi, now we're going to more than 90. Yeah, I could see no that. No peace. I could see that. I, I, I was somewhat tempted to go extra time and City wins an extra time, but now I'm going to stick with City winning. All right, that's the picks. We'll see what happens. Good luck and stuff. I think John's figured out how to do the math these these days, which is very good. We don't have to question it so much anymore. Can we talk about how uh, New Mexico and USL have the low-key hottest uniforms? We can. Those things are amazing. They're very – yeah, they're they're pretty sweet. I cannot uh, diss that at all. They had the Meow Wolf previously, Meow Wolf sponsor. Now they have – what is it like? It's uh, I can't remember what it was. It's a Puma. It's like the Puma cell kits that are just magnificent. <laughs> Y'all's strategy for trying to help John and his picks is just amazing. We want this. The people want this, Jason. You're the only one who doesn't want this. The third kit is the Electric Playhouse kit. Electric Playhouse. That's what it is. That is amazing. It's an electric. It's a. I'm morbidly is... curious if we actually still have European listeners right now. Or if they gave up. Uh, one person did say that they were done, um, which is understandable. Uh, but it's like 2 a.m. So um, stuck with us for a long time, which was very appreciated. Very cool. That's yeah. great. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, that's what's good about this show is we get all kinds of, of different folks hanging out and talking soccer. And that's sometimes right. they think we're absolutely insane, which we are. And that's that's we are. there's nothing wrong with that. No one's going to argue with you. No, There's no other it. soccer show out there where you could hear a Ric Flair or Dusty Rhodes promo dropped randomly throughout the show. No, mm-hmm. not at all. Not at all. We're, we're, we're kind of unique in that. That's right. We are insane. That part's accurate, too. Yeah, that's accurate. That's very accurate. Uh, we haven't had any Nicholas Bentner updates in a while. Oh, good. Thank God. I don't know if he's done anything. <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm sure he's had it's something so to say about the Super League. Existence. Come on, Bentner. Give me a quote on the Super League. He has nothing. Oh, has nothing oh no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. Can I veto this? No. <laughs> and that intro is 100% accurate. Headline, oh, Nicholas Bentner in trouble again. Oh, no. Subhead, Nicholas Bentner has landed himself in more trouble picking up seven, seven, seven driving offenses. Including driving. doing 157 kilometers per hour in a 110 kilometer per hour zone. 157 <laughs> kilometers. Give me, Come give me, on, give me math. Man. What's that mean, John? 98. He's going 98. He was punching FM 97.5 pretty hard. Because one, what's 110 is like around 70, 65 or 70 miles per hour. I yeah, 88 is 55. 157 is 97 and a half. So he Where was, was fun- he going? What, what part of town? Let's is he see. Going to, let's see. He's going he, to the drugstore. Let's see what he's doing. He is uh, off the court again. He, he might have his 176,000 uh, pound Porsche seized. Um, he's very sad about that. He's 33 years old. He will appear in Copenhagen City Court on April 27th. 
five counts of driving without a valid license and two <laughs> counts of speeding. Bro. He can't even get his license? Um, he No, okay, fair enough. This is a little bit of a, a semantics thing. He was driving with a valid UK driving license, which his uh. lawyer will use in his defense. Well, no, how long has he been living? I don't know. I got no idea. Bentner's a man marked. of the world. He's, he's a man of the world. He's everywhere. Um, so then he needs a worldly driver's license. That's yes. right. That yes. doesn't mean anything. Yes. Prosecutors have called for his car to be seized. Yes. Um, I like in this article they, they say Bentner is, is listed as retired on transfer marked, but still plays, turning out for Danish fourth tier side, Tarnby FF, who are currently seventh in a league of nine teams. boy. Oh, oh no. He's strong. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is just mean. To date... The man who wanted to become the world's greatest ever striker has scored 114 goals in 421 appearances. That's just mean. They were they were looking for copy. They were trying to fill out the space in the in the. Uh... You could, you could uh, put the the growth cycle of the uh, like the common P on print, and it's a better usage of the ink. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. Um. Let me see if there's anything else, because this is all over the place now. Um, There's a very pensive uh, shot of him after he was uh, sentenced to 50 days in prison for assaulting a taxi driver a few years ago. Um, Oh, no! Oh, no! He split up with his model girlfriend, Philene! Wow! Saw that kind Oh, wow, hold up. Oh, no! It, the, the incident comes weeks after Bentner split up with his model girlfriend uh, oh. of, of, I guess, three years, Philene Rupstorf. Wow. wow. No more reality wow, shows, huh? Awful. No, no, no. Man, that's no, awful. No. I can't. Oh, no, that's hey, Nick, the best you know thing for the reality outside? show. <laughs> Think on. about what that is for the reality show, Nick. Oh, it could be. Oh. He's oh. dating now. The dating, the Nicholas Bentner dating show. Oh, no. And it's all Nicholas over. Nicholas Bentner Bachelor. It, it's, it's all over the uh, Danish language sites now. Feline well, is completely over true. Nicholas Bentner. She's moving new. It, it translates to. I bet. Um, I wow. Oh no. Um. The 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 the, the split was was confirmed by Feline to uh, a couple different tabloids. I guess they're no longer a couple. Um. She has moved. She quickly moved out of the couple's exclusive mansion and into a, a new apartment. Mansion. Um. Oh. She's ready to establish a completely new independent life. Oh, this is a new season of the reality show. Uh, Writes itself. Oh, no. Um, On her Instagram profile, Felina has reached out to her followers for help cutting the final ties to Bentner. Oh, YouTube has got it nailed. She wants to buy a house. YouTube has it perfect. The Bentnerette. Oh, no. Absolutely. Um, Nick is going to, like, Nick might declare war on Denmark out of of principle. I'm debating it. I'm debating it. Oh, man. Nicholas Bentner is all over the news right now. Um, He's so upset also that this is is such a shame upon Nick's name. She revealed this on her YouTube channel in a a video titled Moving On. Her YouTube channel. Yes, she has Uh a YouTube channel. Sometimes things do not go as planned, and sometimes it is difficult to make the right choice. Nicholas Mm -hmm. and I have parted ways, she wrote in the video. I guess she wrote or she said. It's translated. Um, they're no longer a couple. It puts an oh. end to one of Denmark's most celebrated jet set couple relationships. It is a two minute and 26 oh, second video that has 120,000 views. Wow. Wow. Um, they do not share the same values, I guess. Uh, and I, I believe is being alleged by uh, Feline that uh, there was cheating on. Of the course, side there of is alleged. Uh, uh, alleged. Uh, uh, well, uh, of, uh, what a scoundrel! Yes. Driving his Porsche at tremendous speeds. That was the after streets. they broke up when he was sad. Oh, after. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this, sorry. yeah, he's listening to My Chemical Romance driving 98 miles an hour. Yes. This is this is the plot to like. This is like a plot to like some European remake of The Longest Yard. This is the beginning of it. <laughs> he's going to take over the prison team. He's going to be like, what's yeah. that movie? Uh, he's he's going to be Paul He's going to take over the old Paul boys K. team. Michael He's going to be Paul Crew. Yeah, uh, no. Um, Burt Reynolds. Oh, my God. Well, no, I'm talking Burt about the Reynolds soccer version. No more. Um, Are you thinking the Adam Sandler remake? No, that was sacrilege. <laughs> uh, that was that was not acceptable. We don't, we don't acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, oh okay. Feline is she's packing <laughs> and unpacking all of her stuff, putting wow. her oh, she purses did on oh, hangers. No. John's going to play by play the video. This is amazing. I am. She's she. There there are slow pushes of every room in her new apartment in the heart of Copenhagen. Is this professionally produced, or is she doing this herself? Oh. Oh no no! This is heavily produced. Wow, she's got like wow. a camera crew. Uh, apparently, there's even an Aston Martin book that was next to one of her, well, of her uh, flower pots, which I imagine was a plant. Of no, course, the Aston Martin book. She has one pair of shoes that she has put on a shelf in her living room. Are they special? La Bu- Bil- uh, I guess so. I guess so. Building up my own home, wishing for a bright future, as she's. Making a uh, flower arrangement in the center of her lazy Susan. Hmm. Oh, Rumi. Oh, she's got a German shepherd. She's got a German shepherd dog. Well, German it, she- it, that that's the star of the show, obviously. Oh, it yeah, has to be. Rumi is apparently the name of the dog, still the love of her life. I'm grateful for having the opportunities life throws at me. And it's all subtitled in English into the middle of the screen with very, very slow arcing tilts and pans showing all of the Art Deco and choices that she's made in her new apartment. Art Deco, all, it's coming back. Art Deco's and for all back. of you guys who make my my work wonderful, dissolve to full white screen. I'm wow. imagining that this is going to be a thank you as as it fades to white. Is it? Is it? Is it, is it the, I'm sorry. You, you do the fade to white. Is it? Is it more of a sweep or is it more of the of the just like the bottom up like fade to white or is it a general like? Uh, the more of the like total push to white. Oh, total push, oh, total wow. dramatic oh. push to white. Total dramatic push to white for the last sixteen seconds of the video. A sixteen second fade to white. Uh huh. That's a choice. <laughs> this sounds like if, if your video sounds like it belongs in American Psycho. I need you to be sectioned off from society immediately. I, I got to get caught up on a couple of things from, from Twitch. Uh, first <laughs> off, I don't know which one is better. Hutcho says, if it's European, it will be the longest meter in, in the remake true. of the longest yard. True. Yeah. But true. Will might have beat it with the longest VAR. <laughs> <laughs> both are excellent. And I would like to make both movies, please. Yes. Oh, those are T-shirts, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they might be. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, Nick, quote, which PowerPoint transition did she use? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, no. America demands answers. Katie, I don't... Who is your production use, team? Katie, I don't... She's under, using so, clip art. Katie says, dog is roomy, question mark, like the mystic poet, question mark. I maybe understood no, like, why room, they didn't work out. He seems uh, like less than roommate. contemplative. Like li- literally, roomy. literally, she described like, it in the subtitles as roomy, R O O M I E colon. I like the she idea. Of, like her dog, roomy. Uh huh. Like, that's her, that's like, her like, roomy. Like, like roomy. Like this is my roommate. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh! This is magic. Uh huh. Um, word to use. One more on on our friend Bentner. DM Tim is like, why are we even talking about this guy? I, you have to read the book or, or just get caught up. Just do a search for Nicholas Bentner and, and you'll see him talking about the book he wrote. And it's amazing stories. He is Lord Bentner and you know, we must uh, we must celebrate him. Let's well, genuflect you, you, to his story. You have to understand that this th- – there was a period of time, especially during COVID, when we did not have a lot of soccer content to cover – so covering the <laughs> yeah, it's true. The the absolute just junkyard fire of Nicholas Bender <laughs> proved to be hours of entertainment. Yeah, Nicholas Nicholas Bentner might might actually be a character. He he might be a real life version of Job from Arrested Development. I, I oh. don't know how someone hasn't made this movie in Europe yet. Like like made the the knockoff Nicholas Bentner movie. It's, oh, yeah. it's time. It's time. I mean, we've got the longest VAR or we've got the we longest did. meter. Both we have are, the options. Both are perfect. Um, imagine if you were a online casino and sports book operator. I, yes, in Denmark. And you were trying to decide who you wanted to hire as your brand ambassador. <laughs> yeah. Remember, this is the guy who's had serious gambling issues. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, that's happened. He talked about it in his book. He, he like 
He said he was down like 400,000 euro or dollars yeah. or something, and he got back up to 150, down like 150 for the, the night. Um, that's who you want as your brand ambassador if you are the come on group. Um, I'm, okay. I'm going to recommend that you probably don't uh, do business with the come on group because they hired Nicholas Bentner as their brand ambassador on March 17th. Uh, oh. Right. Right before he broke up with Feline, or she broke oh, up with him. All of this, right this before is a all of this happened. Of events we're talking here. Yes, uh, Burke Rahan, the CCO of the Come On Group, said, "We are extremely pleased to have signed a deal with Bentner. Nicholas is a big personality who divides the waters." Yeah, that's, that's one way to put it. But yeah. <laughs> this is part of who he is and what we love him for. A person that is not afraid to challenge and have an opinion of his own, just like Come On intends to do in Denmark. Be a challenger to the big dogs out there. No. Oh, hold up, hold up. John, you sent me the video. Hold on. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. of, of the girlfriend. Okay, first of all, number one, <laughs> comparing Nicholas Blanking Benton to <laughs> Moses. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a stretch. That is that is that's like the that's the distance between Earth and Mars. Okay, <laughs> so I, I can't anymore. <laughs> this is this is amazing. Hold on. <laughs> Sometimes things don't go as planned. The, the story uh -huh. about his with the, the subtle the, underline. Oh uh -huh. my God. The story about the speeding. I have found articles in England, of course, Denmark, Romania, and Norway about it. Me and Nicholas have parted Everywhere. ways. This relationship has taught me a lot, especially the importance of being on the same page. Uh oh. Many experiences have passed my way, so I'm starting a new chapter in a strengthened position. This is so the open to the new season of the show. Oh, my God. I made a decision to move out of our house in the suburbs and into an apartment in the heart of Copenhagen. But look at all of – look at all of city. the – Wow. One of my favorite cities look I've at ever all visited, of the, my God. I wanted to introduce place. you to the new place. Look at all That would be the new frame place. for all the content I share with you. Oh. oh. There it is. It, it looks like um, – it looks like something that was produced by um, was it Lars von Trier's? Like very like this is something out of a dystopian movie. It's very HGTV ish. It's not even HGTV, man. This is like this is like Black Mirror. Building yeah, up no, my own Chip home. Joanna ain't touching this for a bright future. It, it's like. You see her putting the flowers in, and what you're waiting on is, like, the vault door that opens to, like, the frozen cloned bodies. Rumi, still the love of my life. Uh-huh. The dog is all over the white couch. Nick has watched way too Yes, the dog is shedding. The dog is shedding all over the white couch. She has the three, the three slightly off-colored uh, accent pillows on the couch. <laughs> I'm grateful for having the opportunities life throws. I mean, look at that and the fade. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, and that was a fade to black, uh, sir, if I may. And for all of you guys who make my work meaningful. Oh. Her, her work? Now, and there's the fade to white. Okay, and it is. It's a, an exceptionally long transition. Oh, jeez. And it's not even like a white. It's more of like a fade to eggshell. <laughs> Nick, what are the odds that she, like... Craigslisted this. I guarantee. I guarantee you. She Craig. She whatever. Did she put Danish, this on Fiverr. Uh, and and the video that immediately follows is lower belly fat attack workout <laughs> by Felipe. Uh huh. By Feline. And now, yeah, she's yeah. doing her lower belly fat. Oh uh, boy. Attack crunches, crunches with Felipe. So who would uh who would play Bentner in our movie that we're making? YouTube suggests Sasha Baron Cohen. That might be too on too on the nose. Yeah, they have to. That, that's that's quite good. absurdist, which means it's it's pretty close. Yeah, I think this needs to be over the top. Who would be a younger Daniel Craig? Mm, I don't know if somebody of that ilk would be ridiculous enough. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, do you see Knives Out? Mm, maybe. Yeah. I would say um, I would rob the two leads from the HBO series Made for Love. 
Okay. Uh, Kristen Milotti and uh, Billy Magnuson. Oh, yeah, that could work. Okay. That could work. Uh, YouTube also wants a fade to eggshell shirt. There you go. We're going to make like make so many shirts that sell like one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, before we go, just to, to expound a little bit on why Nicholas Bentner being a uh, brand ambassador for an online casino is a bad idea. Uh, he, I think this was in his book or it might've been when he was doing interviews, he talked about playing online poker and he said, uh, I've been playing against a professional poker player since I was 19. It's difficult to put an amount on how much I have lost, but it is around 50 million Danish crowns, 6 million pounds. He says he's not an addict though. I wouldn't say I've had a gambling problem at all. I've always been able to control it. However, in the past, yeah. I played in really big games. One night in yeah. London, things got out of control, and they could have ended up really wrong. It's not a problem if it's only one thing. It's not a problem. If you're losing, it's, it's just one direction. It's... Yeah. It's all good. Wow. That, that's Fade a lot egg. on the, the Bentner update. It had been a while. The last yeah. time he was like ranked in the top 200 of like fantasy Premier League players in the world. That's not right. that exciting. True. This is why we can't do it because I always like go into like the death spiral of content. I can't. Since then, he's <laughs> he's become a brand ambassador for a casino. He's broken up with his girlfriend of three years. She posted oh, no, she a very emotional him, video. So sorry, she sorry. Made the choice. She made the choice because their their values weren't the same, and That's she posted right. a video about her her dog roommate, and it had a transition to a fade to eggshell, and fade then to eggshell. and then he was. Uh, driving very, very fast in his mm. Porsche, and he didn't Porsche have license. a Danish license, and now he might have his Porsche confiscated, because I guess they do that in Denmark if you drive really, mm -hmm. really fast. They just uh, take your car. Nicholas, from one to another, if I may. Oh, Nicholas, no. Oh, no. if you're going to party like a boy, you better handle responsibilities like a man. Okay? You lost your girl. All right? Wake up Makes like a sense. man and start handling your, your business. Don't worry about whether you can get her back or not. Her, she made a choice. But be a man. You Thank have, you. You have That's different values. Talk. Different values, <laughs> Nicholas. It's okay. I'll be on Clubhouse later. <laughs> <laughs> and that means oh, it's time to go. I'm done. Time to go. <laughs> Thanks, y'all, for watching. I'm sorry. I apologize, as usual, at, by the end of this, because it's out of yeah, control. It always goes off the rails. Six as and a half hours of content today, because nothing happened. Nothing at all happened. Thanks for hanging out. Um, wrestling promos for the win. Absolutely. Danny DDT, thanks for coming back and finding us. We'll be back tomorrow morning, our time anyway, 9 o'clock. Um, we'll actually talk about some soccer things. Uh, Dylan Butler <laughs> of MLSsoccer.com will join us at 9.15. Keep us on the straight and narrow. We'll talk about the first week of MLS. We'll get into Copa Libertadores starting and everything else going on. Thanks for hanging out. Nick, send us home. Mucha, mucha Euro, y'all. All the lira. Support your small teams. <laughs>